Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to today's show. Today's The Spoon Amateur Show. Hope you all are having an amazing evening. Uh, we bailed out yesterday on our painting because uh, we went for a walk. And um, by the time I got back, it was pretty late to continue on. And I just, I wasn't feeling it yesterday. So we'll pick up back on that today. And we'll get into a couple other things here. So just getting things set up. Get some background music going. Get chat set up. That might be a little loud, just let me know. Hey Geek Squad, I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Because it's a little loud for me even. So uh, Geek Squad, I wanted to tell you thank you. I rewatched that walk yesterday and wow, the cam was really shaky, like Snorlax going through an earthquake sort of shaky. And um, I just want to tell you thank you for not laughing and making fun of me because I laughed at it when I watched the replay. It was super shaky. And so um, that kind of gets into the first thing today is this was the backpack cam I was using yesterday. So it clipped to my backpack. Let me just set these others aside here. And um, it was kind of resting on my chest. And so, I mean, there, and then the weight of the phone out here. So it was just creating so much wobble, right? Being on the backpack and, um, you know, being against my chest. And then all this, all this um, extension here. And then the weight of the phone out there was creating quite, quite the wobble system yesterday. So, um, yeah. Even, even my family member like laughed at it. So I did order a couple others. That's what was down in my mailbox. When I walked past my mailbox yesterday, there was a couple more. So this one here is much um, like without this stem here, it just clips to the backpack and then the phone sets really flush to the strap. And this one I like because this part glues to your phone and it's a like a ring, which I don't have on my phone anymore. I used to have a ring. Oh no, uh, Geek Squad, it wasn't you at all. It was, um, it was a couple different things that, that set me off a little yesterday and a bit just myself too, right? You have to take responsibility for your own feelings. So I had posted in, um, Troll Central before I went live that I was about to go live and someone was like, pass, so what? And there's kind of someone who's given me crap before, so I kind of took that a little personally. And then when Newfie came in, it was just like, you're boring when, you know, she's such a cunt. So it was a couple things. It wasn't you at all. And, um, and uh, when I went back and watched that shaky cam footage, um, I realized how, how hilarious it was. I mean, if you had laughed during that time, um, I mean, I might have been a little bit hurt, but um, I would have gone back and reviewed it and it would have been like, wow, wow, that was definitely worth laughing about. Yeah, so, I mean, I even kind of blew off. Al, Al's always making fun of me, right? So he was there saying, calling me Oopa Loopa. And after I rewatched it, I'm like, okay, well, I can now see why Al said that. Um, a family member who knows me has watched some of my live streams, like with my hands and that. And they're like, like, they call me by my name, which is Addie. They're like, Addie, have you gained like a hundred pounds? Because like, I see your, your videos and like, wow, you just like look really puffed up. I'm like, no, I've actually probably lost like 10 pounds since you saw me. But I've gone back and kind of looked and like, you know, like you look, it just doesn't, I don't think it's, you know, translates well on camera or whatever. And a lot of women have really long fingernails. And I think, I mean, I already have short stubby fingers. These are the hands I was born with. But, you know, keeping your nails short just makes them look more stubby and that, whatever, right? So anyways, back to this. Back to this uh, clip here. So um, this one sets closer to um, to you. 
and then your phone's here and what i like about this one is that it has a quick release so you just push this button and your phone will come off so i like that and it kind of clicks into place the thing is though is it's not adjustable tiltable this way not that this one was really tiltable that way either right it just has one pivot right So you couldn't do any type of, of like adjustment this way. It just has one pivot, which doesn't really matter because your phone is setting horizontal this way. Yeah, and I'm not super fit, right? Like, you know, we'll be real. But um, I did, I did kind of look back and like, okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. Sometimes though, you know, the internet's mean. I was telling my family member, I'm like, either as a woman, either you're anorexic or you're too fat. That's just how the internet is for a woman. You're always objectified and you're always sexualized in some way. And not saying that everyone's sexualizing you, but that's just the way how the internet is. Is you're objectified and either you're anorexic or you're too big or, or you're hot and you're fuckable. So you can't, like I've been around the internet a long time. You just can't take that kind of stuff to heart. And the best way is like how I talk to Al, like just roll with it. You know, he calls me, me, my arms like um, Christmas hams. And, you know, you just laugh and make jokes about it. And that's, that's what you could do with the internet and the commentary on the internet. So, yeah. So, right, the phone sets in here. I'll get a skinnier card set because I don't want to, like, really. So, a phone sets in here, right? And it just pivots. So, you can't do any kind of adjustment this way or tilting this way with this one. And see how far out it would set from your body. So, definitely creating a, a wobble fit while you're walking, right? <laughs> So, um, but then to like get your phone out because it's got like little, like little, this card deck's not that skinny, but it's got little clips in here. So it's a real struggle like to get your phone out. That's why I just, this, I probably would have taken you guys out and shown you the ocean better if it wasn't like going to be this disaster to take the phone out of there. Where this one here, once your phone is glued on, right, your phone's glued on and poop, out it comes, easy peasy. So I like this one, but I have a th another option here that I haven't built because I don't want to stick this to my phone until I'm sure. I know I could just break down and get a gimbal too. I don't think though, I don't think like there's a, that's what I'm going to research over the weekend. I'm about to roll into a third week and this is my last live stream for this week. My girls have tomorrow off school. So this weekend I want to look for maybe like a gimbal that like mounts in some way right like to a backpack or something like that so this one seems to be like also a close fitting clip system and then i guess there's a bunch of attachments here and i'm kind of familiar with this system a bit these little all these attachment points because right here I have my daughter's under the water cam, which I'll show. Nothing fancy because, you know, she's young, so it's not like a GoPro or anything. But it got, it gets like, you know, it's got like 15,000 reviews on Amazon Japan. Let me just slide this all aside here. So this is my daughter's under the water cam. And so it just clips to her neck. So she can actually swim while, um, while filming, she can swim and then it sets, it can set really close to her body and then it has two, two, um, very tight pivot points. And I believe somewhere along the way, she's turned it upside down. I don't know why, cause this is the angle of it. It's supposed to be this way, but whatever. Whatever, I always could, like, you always just unscrew it and then uh, flip the camera around super easy. So this is her underwater cam, and this works really good for her. So this has these same kind of clip systems.
get those all out here. I guess up some stuff you don't really need. I'm just going to switch this up here. Sorry, you guys, I don't have all messages on, but I fixed it there. So now I'm looking at this and it looks to be about the same as this one, except, oh, here's the piece that's missing. Oh, it does. Okay. It does have instead of this. So instead of this curved arm here, it has a much shorter piece. So instead of the curved arm, it has a shorter piece. So these are very similar, just a little, a little different. We'll put them together and set them side by side. Probably could just do a whole channel of reviews of backpack clips. And it has this bigger, this bigger screw for it too. Not that you guys can really see that very well. Day on the spoon show building building backpack clips and I guess they gave me an extra little bolt I'm not really sure how they would do best for viewing here so you can see where this one's a bit shorter, maybe not such a long, um, long pivot point. But overall, I think this one, right, which sets very, very close to the body is going to be the best option out of all of them. Plus, I like that quick release, that quick release button. So, but first, I might try this one. I've already done this one. And uh, we're going to call this one, we're going to label this one Snorlax Earthquake. <laughs> this one, I'll give a try on this weekend. And then I'll probably just end up settling for this. And then I will research um, gimbal um, mounts. I have some ideals in mind. Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of what, what, um, what I need is more like a body cam or I just need to finally just break down and embrace buying a Sony Action Pro that can set on my shoulder top, right? That's what the, um, the other IRL streamers do, but I don't know if I really want to be much of an IRL streamer. <laughs> I mean, this is all kind of just mostly all for one stream that I would like to do of taking the live stream on the train. And I don't know if I would ever want to do it again after the one experience. You don't know until you try. So I might take the train with you guys and be like, well, that was not enjoyable at all. We're never doing that again. And, um, and or I might love it and then we're taking the train every day. You just don't know. You don't know how things are going to go until you try it. I'd love to, I was going to take you guys to the beach again today because we haven't done that for a while. Go sit on the beach, but it's not a nice day today. Yesterday would have been the perfect day for that. I won't tell anyone Geek Squad. Your secret's safe. You just shared it with, you know, all the viewers here. <laughs> and you should. You should. Uh more and more people are doing it. So those are the three. Well, this one we've done and it sucks. This one I'm going to try out and probably end up with this one at the end. And then check out some, 
some um, gimbal style shoulder mounts or something with a like if I'm going to choose between a Sony action cam or a GoPro, I'm definitely, I've already got that figured out that I like the Sony action cam better than the GoPro. Hey Jeff, I know we're going to get into that here in a bit. Having a little bit of tech, tech review. You might've just wandered in. So Jeff, I'll bring it back out here just for you because I know you're doing stuff. I know you said you were going to set up a tripod for your thing. But um, if you ever get into considering backpack, um, like backpack clips for your phone. This one here is the one I used yesterday, which we're nicknaming Snorlax Through an Earthquake. Because it has such a long stem. It has a quite the pivot while you walk. Like the weight of your phone out here. And just being on a backpack, like it bounces a lot. And uh, this is like an in-between we're going to try that might be a little bit more steady and stable. And then this is probably the one I'm going to end up settling with because it sits very close to your body. And it has, which I think is my favorite part, a quick release to pop your phone out. Like this, uh, this glues onto your phone. And it's a ring holder too. Which I don't have on my phone since I upgraded to a wireless charger. I had to, you guys, I had to go buy a wireless charger that day. I took the phone to the beach because I got so much water in it. And I live streamed until my battery died or almost died that my phone wouldn't charge. And then by the time I got over to base to buy a wireless charger, it, um, it was fine. But I was already there, so I bought it anyways. Yeah, I have this mic. I have a Hollandland mic. I actually have two. I have that Hollyland, which I really like, which is now far away from me. And then I have like this like $20 one that I picked up. So the $20 one has this receiver that goes with it. And the Hollyland one, the Hollyland, and I was debating between Hollyland and something else. So the Hollyland one, I'm sorry you guys are far away, but here we are. The Hollyland one has this like rechargeable case. So you have to take off the little fuzzy thing and it just fits right. It might go to charging and turn off, I don't know, but it just, yeah. Right, it's got a little plug in and plugs in so you could just lay them down and let things charge and it's nice to have two because if the battery dies out on one then I have the backup one yeah I know on uh, geek squad it picks up my breathing because I have health issues too I, I do kind of breathe pretty deeply a couple months ago I had to go get um, four liters of blood because I was having health issues. So that's just, that's going to be part of life. And, and it's partially me too. Like, um, like I'm just not used to talking to people in a long time. And so like I'm loud, I'm soft, like I'm just, um, really out of practice with social skills. Yeah. I like the furry thing too. It helps cut on wind and I noticed that yesterday so when we were looking at the ocean um, it was really windy and then when I um, when I um, played it back you didn't pick up so much of the wind so that was kind of nice but yeah the mic's really sensitive for picking up breathing and then I think when we went for our walk yesterday so right now the light's blue Um, if I press this button it turns green and it kind of cuts background noise but I have it blue right now because I've got the background music playing but yeah I know I know it picks up my breathing that's that's on me to work on that's a me issue it means it's a good mic and it's a me issue
And I practice it. Um, I practice it a lot. Like when I'm reading the horoscopes, like that's my time to like slow down and be really careful with how I speak and speaking clearly and pronunciation. And it's kind of like a little bit like speech therapy. YouTube's my speech therapy sessions when I read your guys' horoscopes. So um, it just helps me through all those things and just working on it. All right, I thought we could do a review of our paintings of the week and then get back into the one we didn't finish. So this here is our Auntie Nan Nan painting. And I'll just make sure it gets all the way there in screen. So Auntie Nan Nan here with the AI robots that are trying to capture the monarch butterflies to eat them to get the energy to make more AI, AI artwork that Auntie Nan Nan doesn't like. She hates AI artwork. So that is the first painting we did of the week and my first painting as an adult. Um, so not, you know, used to paint a lot maybe when I was a child, but never painted as an adult who has time for that well now we do because we're making content and we're not going to be some talking head on a panel then the second painting we did um was our my sorry not our you guys are just along for the ride my dream interpretation i had of two dreams about carl and what carl might look like which by the way the robert escobar show where is your challenge for the day? You told me Wednesday. It's American Wednesday, I'm sure, right? Yes, because it's my Thursday. So it's American Wednesday. You told me this was due by Wednesday and you've only got a couple hours left on um, your 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 um, challenge that you created and set the due date to. Slacker. So here's my dream interpretation of Carl. Uh, this first dream up here was I dreamt about Carl and he gave me a hug and patted me on the head and told me everything was going to be all right. And he smelled like Hawaiian tropic suntan oil. And then this other dream here was a different night. I dreamed that I was in an old European town village and there was a cobblestone road and there were some children playing soccer. And then over on a balcony was an older gentlemanly Carl and a younger Carl and the older Carl was giving the younger Carl some something some advice um, the secrets of the universe screenshots clips something I don't know because I was sitting here off in the distance you know I couldn't hear them couldn't hear it so that was our second painting of the week this is our third painting in progress, which I had a little inspiration a little bit earlier about. And um, we're going to finish up today. And then maybe depending on how much time we have today, we'll get into a fourth painting that's in my mind. We don't know. We'll see. So just going to get you guys set there good on clipped on my shirt and get our paints out and ready to go. We also haven't checked in with Planty today. We didn't do Planty for a while so here's planty planty's doing really good with some new growth i'm not liking how like this leaf is touching the edge but um planty's doing okay planty is a monsteria um half moon and planty's friend that got acquired This is Planty's friend, which is slowly growing, um, has a little bit of growth coming out. And Planty's friend is a Monsteria tiger. So half moon tiger. And this one should put out some like some stripey or speckly green and white leaves. It just happens to have this all white leaf at the moment. Because sometimes that happens too. And then a uh, half moon over here should put out split leaves. So this one does kind of stripey speckled leaves and this one does split leaves. There we go. We checked in on our work, which we haven't really done all week. I watered them earlier in the week. Sunday is my watering day, my plant watering day. 
but um, you know, share them with you guys. Now, very important here to keep our water, our paint water separate from our drinking water. Yeah, great plants. I have a bunch of Thai constellations outside, which are really big. And I have some more albos outside, which I'm going to have to start bringing in. And then I'm going to have to have to make a plan because usually I fill my windowsills with um, all the plants from outside. And um, I use this windowsill now for live streaming. So I'll have to make a decision if I want to sacrifice plant space for live streaming space. Because this really is, in my opinion, the best place to um, live stream at in my house. Like good natural light. And everything fits here. Like the, um, the, the stand that I have up fits here. That's kind of the awkward part because the other end of it sticks out really far. Oh, some missing paintbrushes. Excellent. Hey, Amy. So what I really realized today, what was missing from this picture was a rainbow. And I know we all said we were kind of boycotting Tommy Temper, but I was listening to him for a bit before I went live. And um, some of the things he was, he was saying was really, I'm not going to say really upsetting because it wasn't really upsetting so much, but that, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a polite way to phrase it, but we'll, we'll get into it. So a lot of concern going on with right and right leaning people and hard right people is um, these drag drag show, right? These library drag shows. And they've really just kind of gotten into it within the last year. And what they don't really realize is that drag show readings at the library have been happening for at least 15 years, maybe longer. I just know about 15 years because that's how long ago I heard about them. And when they started, it used to be... I'm going to turn it upside down a bit, guys, because it's just easier. So when it first started, it was mostly for people that were already in the LGBTQIA plus community. So um, they were families that maybe had, you know, two, two gay parents, two lesbian parents, maybe, you know, someone in their family was a cross dresser. So it was mostly for families that were part of LGBTQIA or people in the community that just wanted to know more um, in a kind of not sexualized format, right? Like you go to a drag show, it could be very intimidating and not everyone's available at night to go to a drag show, but it was also a place for parents to choose to maybe expose their children to that type of persona in a way that was not sexualized and in a way that like some parents teach their children to love everyone. And I know I've talked about this before is that, you know, kids are curious. And if you, let's take an example of someone in a wheelchair. If you don't expose children to someone in a wheelchair, or ever talk to them about it, then the first time they see someone in the wheelchair, they're going to be very shocked. And they're going to be like, hey, what's that? 
you know, like if you've been around kids, you know this about kids. So, or if you live in a predominantly, you know, one race of neighborhood, then um, when you go somewhere else and there's someone of a different race, children are going to exclaim, what's that? So sometimes you just don't want your kids out in public exclaiming, what's that? And being, you know, like, it can be embarrassing as a parent when you have a very curious child who exclaims, what's that? Or others. And especially when it comes to anything revolving like handicapped people, right? Then children are definitely like, you don't want to hurt that person in the wheelchair, that person with Down syndrome or um, person missing a leg. Like you don't want to offend that person. And you could see, um, or even just two women kissing in public or two men holding hands in public or, and I'm not talking like make out session. I'm talking like just everyday life, you know, like say a lesbian couple, you know, they're, uh, one's dropping one off work. Maybe like, maybe you're sitting with your kid at a Starbucks, right? And, uh, there's a lesbian couple and one of them works at the Starbucks and the other lesbian is dropping her off at work and they give each other a quick peck on the cheek or whatever the standard you know relationship scenario that you can see in any normal hetero relationship and there are people out here in the world who don't want their kids to be like oh my god what's that because kids will be kids kids have a curiosity they want to uh they want to know and understand things that are happening in the world so there are people out there, and parents, who choose to teach their kids that, hey, when we're out and about, you might see two women holding hands and it is okay. You might see two men holding hands and it is okay. That's their life. It is okay. So parts of drag shows 15 years ago was about that, about it is okay. If men want to dress up, and perform a performance it's okay it's okay he's a grown-up he could do what he want and you could get a little bit into the history of it like oh back in Shakespearean times only men could play in plays so you could bring a historical element to it and all in all we teach our kids they could be anything right you could be an astronaut you could be the president you could be anything you put your mind to be so that um, definitely comes into play when you think about kind of maybe the progression, because what this has transpired to is a progression of time and culture and where the world is today. It wasn't like everyone woke up and all of a sudden, boom, we've got, you know, drag, sh drag queens doing story times. It's been a progression, uh, uh, not only a political progression, but a social progression progression a cultural progression especially in North America so when you get into um I forgot where I was starting with that but um oh about gender conformity so we have situations you know where we have at a store right at a general store is the boy toy aisle and the girl toy aisle right so this this is in my opinion where some of this change has started and it started long ago it didn't start last year so when we have toy specific gender toy aisles at a toy store and gender specific clothes and i mean i'm, I'm gonna say it even goes back further because it's true when i was a kid too as well so, you know, girls wore dresses and boys wore pants or girls wore pink and boys wear blue and boys play with, you know, balls and sports and Legos and girls play with dolls and kitchen stuff, right? We've had this gender conformity on our children for the longest time. But when you teach children that they can be anything they want to be, then that starts to cross over into well, mom, why can't I, I'm a boy. Why can't I play with dolls? You tell me I could be anything I want to be. Why can't I want to be a dad? Why can't I want to be a good dad? What's wrong with being a dad? What's wrong with being, um, growing up and being a spouse that helps with washing the dishes or baking or whatever? Why, you know, and we have this, um, just normally, you know, men who are chefs, 
so I mean when you think about it a little bit along those lines you know like what what did those men who are chefs what did they play with as children did they play with G.I. Joe dolls so a lot of this change started coming a little bit from so much I mean it's a variety of places it came from but also including gender conformity in our society that we've allowed and in a way in some ways fighting that there's nothing wrong with a little boy wanting to play with dolls or playing with kitchen there's nothing wrong with a girl playing sports and we started seeing these changes of just heterosexual straight you know cis born you know genders taking on the roles of you know women in the military women in different political offices um, it's longer, you know, it's longer ago than just last year, you know, it was used to be what there's a bunch of things that women couldn't do. Women couldn't vote. Women couldn't have their own credit cards. Women couldn't have a driver's license. And I'll, some of that stems from some of the legislation that like Ruth um, put into office before she died and some of the things she fought for because she fought for women's rights. So a lot of what you see today is built upon a history of change. And a lot of it is not only just, you know, LGBTQIA movement, but a lot of it's also built from the women's movement. And that these roles we put different gender classifications, people, gender classifications into long before there was a LGBTQIA. I mean, it was always there kind of in the background, right? And I said something, I heard Tommy Temper say something along the lines of like, why did people need to come out of the closet? You know, why can't you just keep your private life private? And the reason why is because people got killed for, um, for their, their private lives. And I was just recommending this movie to um, someone who's trans. Um, back in 1999, a movie came out called Boys Don't Cry. I don't know if you guys have seen this movie. I'm just going to do a little review on it. So back in 1999, a movie came out called Boys Don't Cry. It stars um, Charlene Thiez, who's really amazing in this movie. And it's about a transgender um, female to male. Which, you know, statistically female to male is a little less common than male to female. But it's still very valid. So in this movie, um, the character just, just wants to live their life. They feel they're adults, so they can make their own grown-up decisions, right? They feel that... And they felt this their whole life, that they are a boy living in a woman's body. And they also lived in the South. So there wasn't a lot of options available to them, especially um, in the timeline of this story. And this story is based on a true story. But they, uh, they found their way and they found some people to help them along the ways. And then they end up, this, the movie um, goes on that they get a girlfriend. And the girlfriend doesn't even know that they're... Um, they're a girl, like born a girl. They believe that they are male. And it comes to where, you know, they're going to have sex. And um, the girlfriend, the, the transgender person gets like a, like a perfect, like, um, sorry, I'm just struggling with what YouTube allows to say in that. Anyways, they, the transgender person has help. To make it seem very realistic. There we go. And um, and the girlfriend is still believing that they're male. But someone in the town figures it out or something. Somehow it gets found out. And the transgender person gets killed. Legitimately. Like real life true story here. The transgender person gets killed. Very brutally. Very brutal. So when you talk about why can't people just stay in the closet? Because they're fucking dying. They're getting killed. I mean, that kind of goes back to the Stonewall riots and, and a lot of LGBTQ history. People just want to live. They just want to live their life. They want to be themselves and who they are. And they don't want to be killed over it. So why can't they stay in the closet? Because they want to live. They want to live their life. They don't want to live in hiding. They want to be who they are. They want to, you know, be happy. And that at overall is um, what, um, what it's about. Is people just want to live their lives and be happy. And what the fuck is it in any of your business about other people's happiness and joy? 
And so much of what um, the far right is fighting is about like, don't touch, don't touch our kids. See, your problem isn't about not touch. If you were a good parent and you believed what you believed, then um, you would teach your kids whatever the fuck you wanted to teach your kids. If you don't agree with what's going on in schools these days, then you would teach your kids otherwise. The problem is, is you don't spend time with your kids. And this isn't anyone specific. The problem with people these days is they don't spend time with their kids and they don't spend time teaching their kids. Because what's happening in schools isn't um, motivated by the school board. It's not motivated by teachers. It's not motivated by any agenda. It's motivated and driven by children. And if you spend any time with your children... Um, and what they're doing and what they're exposed to all on their own, them talking to each other, if they have access to the internet, what they talk about in chat rooms, things like that, then you would know that over, not just like this past year, but over years, many years, children share this stuff with each other. What's happening in schools is coming from the children themselves. They're teaching themselves. They're talking to each other. And the reason why you might see more and more children embrace maybe trans or curiosity about trans is because it's more acceptable. It's okay to be yourself. You don't have to hide who you are. And so the more children that embrace other children just being themselves... Go let that set for a bit. I thought I needed to dab it. The more open and um, transparent it's going to be amongst the children. And these school systems are overall mostly just supporting what, I'm not going to see really what their customer is, but I mean, it's kind of that. It's kind of what the children are bringing to school. And that overall, I mean, they're teaching love and acceptance of all. Like, if you are so far right that you have issues with stuff, then you need to figure out how you're going to explain to your children, hey, mom or dad or whoever you are, I was at school today and my friend, little Joey Sue or Susan or Joe or whatever, right? Not Joey Sue, but whatever, Joe, Sue, whatever. They told me they have two dads. What's that about? If you can't answer that question for your child in a way that suits your beliefs or your family values, then your child's going to figure it out from someone else. And if you're teaching your children that it's wrong, then your child's going to take that in their mind and they're going to go forward in their life with it. And they're going to think about what you said. And if your child decides, you know what? I don't like, like if you have a son and you're like, I don't like girls. I like boys. They're going to remember what you said to them and they're not going to tell you. And Overall, what you should do is just love your children and teach your children love. So when little Joey tells, you know, decides that he's gay and he remembers when you told him that was wrong, he's not going to tell you and he's going to disassociate from you and go live his life or worse than that, he's going to be so saddened that he can't tell you that he contemplates suicide. And that is just reality. Teen death, teen suicide over LGBTQ worries and stress is a huge, huge percentage. I don't have the numbers, but it does happen. And isn't that horrible? Isn't that horrible that you couldn't, you've created a situation where your child didn't feel like they could be open and honest and transparent with you and that killing themselves was a better option? That's horrible. That's what I feel like the far right wants. That they want to create situations in their home where their children doesn't feel loved, doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't feel like their parents are approachable. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. Maybe someone who's far right can speak up on that. It's not like I'm really reading the chat. Oh, uh, Susan Knox, this is Wizzy. It's a leftover from yesterday.
It's uh, my dream of Wizzy. He's um, working at a high school cafeteria serving carrots. And if you are someone on the right, far right, whatever, and you really want to know what your kids are going, learning, and that from their peers, start following them on, on all the places. Take your time. Get off your ass and take your time and follow your kids around on the internet. Because I've followed my kids on the internet. My younger one's not really on the internet yet. But my older one is and has been for a couple years. And I followed her into every form. I followed her in every space. I was the only parent that played Roblox with her. So, I mean, that says a lot. There's thousands of thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids on Roblox. And I was the only parent shadowing my kid on Roblox. So, so many of uh, parents out there don't know what their kids are doing. Don't know what their kids are talking about. Don't know what their kids are talking and, and, you know, you're so concerned about online predators, which, yes, that is valid. There is a lot of online predators and not so much on Roblox, but there, I'm sure there's some there. Um, you should be concerned about what your kids are telling each other. It's not just all the big bad wolf on, um, on the Internet. It's kids talking to other kids. My daughter can, uh, my older daughter, she can, um, she can reddick better than I can. And she used to participate in forums with other children her age, nine, nine, nine's the youngest. Um, I saw someone say they were on reddick, um, who could read and type. So nine, 10, 11, 12, up to 15. Sure. Yeah. Maybe some weren't really that young. They were predators. They're looking for something, but a lot of them were real kids and you know someone's gonna say oh no it was all paid paid protesters paid people no 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 there was real kids there and a lot of them were kids saying hey I want to come out to gay as my parents but you know the worst thing to read a kid say that you know as a kid I think I'm gay and I can't tell my parents because they're going to kill me you think about that. You think about if your child, if you lurked, right? We're all so good at lurking. Why don't you lurk on your children? Why don't you lurk on, you know, what your children's hearing from other children, what your children's saying to other children? Can you imagine if you read that? How would you feel? What part would upset you? Would it upset you that your child thinks they're gay? Or would it upset you more that your child says they're too scared to tell you because of your reaction? Because they're fearful of you. I mean, how dare you raise a child to be fearful of you? What the fuck is wrong with you? And you go out here and you go to these school boards that have no control over what's happening. And you think that waving a sign and yelling a shouting is going to change anything. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. You need to be in your own home. That's where the change will happen. School board has nothing to do with it. What, what are you doing? You're waving a sign of hate. You're basically, you're wanting the school board to hate. You want them to teach hate. You want them to teach non -ex This is why schools aren't budging. Because you right-wingers are fucking out of your minds. <laughs> Someone's going to say, oh, but they have, they have litter boxes in classrooms. No, they don't. And even if they did, who cares? Who ca I mean, yes, it's silly. It's ridiculous. Who really cares? Is the child happy? Is the child being fed? Is the child, you know, learning? Who cares? You're trying to teach them they could be anything. Then what? They can't pretend to be a cat for however long that phase. Children go through so many phases. Who cares if they pretend to be a cat for a period of time? I could tell you that most schools, probably all schools, and if you have some crazy story about a school having a litter box, then it's probably some kind of media stunt or something. No school has the budget for a fucking litter box and all the litter. And no teacher's going to take the time to change a litter. And no child's going to be pulling their pants down in a classroom to use a litter box. 
like use your brain logically and think through this. And most teachers, and I'm sorry that baby's not here because she would speak up on it. Most teachers, baby's a teacher. Most teachers are just trying to get through the day. They're just trying to get through the day to teach your children basics of, you know, reading, arithmetic, and math. But they also are the ones that are there who are answering the questions of, you know, like when their peer has two moms or when their peer has, you know, two dads or, you know, teenage. Like I know that at my older daughter's middle school, they had a um, club, LGBTQIA club um, for, I can't remember if it was after school or during school. Um, I think it was, I think it was after, no, it was during school. Um, so they had an LGBTQIA club at the school just to support children. Ch it was mostly children supporting other children. And then there was a, like an advisor who just, you know, made sure, you know, no one was punching each other and stuff. And then all these children were on a Discord together. That's it too. You might not have Discord, but your kids do. Your kids are on Reddit. Your kids are on Discord. Your kids are places you don't even know. And um, for the, the LGBTQIA class at my children's school, um, you know, they, they like, it was the Discord was just, within the school like each person that got added to the discord so it was one of the older kids in charge of it and the um they validated that each person was known right like okay i know you i've seen you between classes so these kids all talk to each other they've all like there's no predator in that group in that discord they all have verified each other made sure each other's legit in a safe place um where there's no you know like anyone that's trying to prey upon them and um, they talk about all kinds of things. My daughter comes, has come to me because she's been in that group now two years. She comes to me with questions um, about, you know, things other think kids say or questions that um, she has. And she knows that anytime she can ask me questions about anything and I will answer. And if I don't know the answer, we'll, we'll go we'll go look it up. That's how I approach parenting. I'm not saying I'm a great parent or the best parent or a stellar parent or better than you, but um, my child has no fear to ask questions and to tell me anything she wants. And my response, like um, I told this story before on a live stream. Um, she told me a while back she thought she was a lesbian and I asked her if she had kissed a girl and she said no. And I asked her if she kissed a boy and she said no. And I'm like, try both and figure it out. You're in no rush to grow up and you can figure it out. I didn't tell her she was wrong for feeling that way. I didn't tell her she was right or wrong. I didn't encourage her either way. I told her, try it out. Grow up and try it out when you're ready. Because she's still not ready. She's still not ready to kiss a boy or girl. She's in high school. She's not ready. And she says that. And I'm like, you know what? You'll do it. You'll, you'll, you'll experience it when you wish to experience it. When the time is right for you. Because she's in what? She was in ninth grade. She's in ninth grade now, right? Nine, ten. No, she's in tenth grade. Yeah. So, I mean, she's 14. I don't know about you guys, but I was already kissing by, boys by 14. But, um, you know, she'll come, she'll come around in her own time. And I just tell her, you will, you will find what fits you. Why wouldn't you tell your children that? I don't know. But all this, you know, all this hate in the streets of don't touch my children. You guys don't touch my children. Fuck off with your crazy hate. Oh, 
know, focus on your own kids and what they know and what they heard and what they're learning, what they're teaching each other. And if you don't like what a school's doing, go get a job as a teacher. I mean, you're not even there. You're not even there to realize how hard a teacher's job is, how hard a school board's job is. And to think that all this started within the last year or so, you've, you've missed it. You've missed something that's been that's been developing over over years. And it's it's not gonna change. No matter how much you might yell at a school, it's not gonna change. That was too dark around the letters. Just going to clean that up a bit. I just kind of blurred it all into one there. All right. We'll just let that dry out a bit. Then we'll fix that up. Yeah, my daughter um, has a best friend who's transgender and you know before you guys come 14 is too young to be transgender child feels how they feel and um, their mom has grown to accept them took some time you know it took time it took time when you love a child you want to be like are you sure right but um the mom came to accept this is the way how they fell. You know, their mom knew them best, knew them their whole lives. And, um, but the father doesn't. And so the child has to hide. Isn't that, isn't that sad? A child that has to hide their feelings from their father. The feelings they feel that is themselves, right? They feel like this, this is themselves, right? They, they, they fully embrace that they are transgender and this is how they identify and they have to hide from their own father how they feel. So this child suffers depression, like hiding in their room, um, you know, hiding from their family, not spending time with their family because they feel like they have to hide from their father. And they feel, ultimately, they feel like their father doesn't love them. I mean, my daughter's been friends with this child for two years. So, I mean, I've, I've heard some of the conversations. I've seen some of the conversations. I've had conversations with my daughter. I've had conversations with this child. They went to the Pride Parade together, not this last year, but the year before. So, I mean, I've seen, I've seen this child with my own eyes and seen, um, seen how they've worked through this over the last two years, how they've worked through their own feelings about their own family and how their, you know, their own father doesn't, doesn't believe them, doesn't um, accept them. Um, shuns them. Just, just because, just because their child wants short hair and wants to wear 
uh, you know, a dress shirt and pants. That's, that's what their father's shunning them for. How dare you want short hair? How dare you want to wear a dress shirt and pants? You should be a girl. You should have long hair. You should put bows in your hair. You should wear dresses. You should wear pink. Isn't that ridiculous? Um, any of you who are in the chat, you've grown up with a, as a girl. Like, um, you know how hard it is. And um, my 14-year-old, um, she's starting, you know, to develop like as girls do. And like getting hit on all the time by adult, adult men. She doesn't want that. She's socially awkward. That is so awkward. I know I grew up with it. It was so awkward to be a child, a, a, a female child, and start to grow into your body and into your, your adulthood, your development. And, um, you know, that carries with you for a long time. I know um, in my 20s, I was just trying to shop. Just trying to shop in a store. Like just it wasn't like a grocery store it was um like a department store and i was looking at candles and this guy came over to me and was like i was wearing i was married at the time not to my current husband my, but my previous husband so i was wearing my wedding ring and he's all like are you married and i was like super shy and intimidated and nervous and not very social and and i was just like a little nod like yeah leave me the fuck alone and then he kept on, like, trying to, like, get me to, like, I don't know, go into the corner of the store and do something with him. Like, I don't know. I don't know what this guy's intentions were, but it was super creepy. And it creeped me out and I left the store because I was shy at the time. I was super shy. But that happens to women. Every, almost every woman has been through this experience growing up. Any woman who's been born a woman is still a woman has been through this experience growing up as a teenager into young adulthood of men constantly creeping on you. And, um, no, it wasn't an adult who's, well, see the thing. So Geek Squad, the thing with my daughter is now she looks like an adult. So the, you know, we have a base full of 18 year olds and my daughter's 14, but she looks like she's an old, she looks like she's their age. So it's not like they're intentionally, it's, I get it that people do, adults do intentionally do that to kids, but her situation is kind of a little bit of a gray line where they don't realize that she's only 14. They're young themselves. And you know, it's a bunch of military, horny military men running around. So, I mean... It's just, it's, it's the territory, right? It's the environment. It's the circumstances. But it's an experience that all women have everywhere. Is that if you're not, you know, some hideous basement troll, you're going to get hit on by men. And probably even if you are a hideous basement troll, you're still going to get hit on by men because you're now an easier target. I don't know. But it is, and it's unfortunately... I, from my life experience, almost, almost exclusive to North America-ish, kind of. And probably some parts of the other parts of the world kind of have this, this dynamic as well. But I know it's not here in Japan. Like, I get on the train and it's peaceful and calm and no one's looking each other up and, you know, hitting on each other. But if there's a fucking American man on that train, he is... Like trying to hit up every woman on the train. And that's not saying all. But that's what I've seen. It's an American to me. And in my opinion. It's an American culture thing. Maybe a little bit of a Canadian culture. Because I did grow up there. But I don't think I saw it as much there. And you know the US has television shows about this and that. And you know there's it stems out of like bar culture. And then it's spun over into like internet. Where like the unsolicited dick pic came from. Kind of America online dating. And America has probably some of the most online dating apps in the whole world. It's a culture that's developed. So when you're a young girl, you don't like my daughter has gone from like dressing fun and really wanting to like wearing anything, you know, wearing cute things and that as you know, it might be put to now she just wears oversized sweatshirts. Even in the summer. 
Like she wants to hide her body so that uh, no one bothers her. And I can relate to that. I can relate to that. And I think a lot of girls can relate to that. And I think when you think about um, young teen transgender, especially male to f um, female to male, um, I think some of it stems from that. We're just fucking tired of being hit on. And I can see maybe where some of the, the mental processes, if I'm a boy, then I won't get hit on. I mean, a bunch of things, right? A bunch of things factor into someone's choices to consider transgender. But I can see that being one of them. And that's not going to change, right? This conversation is not going to change it. It's a cultural development. But do you see these um, right-wingers going and approaching men like, hey, maybe stop, you know, objectifying and hitting on girls. And um, not to really call out Tommy Temper, but Tommy Temper, you show a dancing, sexualized woman sometimes on your live stream, like some kind of clip. You are part of the problem. You're objectifying women. You know, you're, you're using a, a, what is that? A little avatar you're using um, on your, on your live stream of a, of a sexualized dancing woman. You are part of the mentality that is part of this overall of women are, are objects to objectify, to sexualize. And that whole thing you shared on your live stream a few days ago about your wife in the kitchen and, and spanking her and how she enjoyed it. Do not share that on a live stream. You know, be respectable, not only to your own marriage, but to your own spouse. That's pr I don't care what you guys do in the privacy of your home, but like all you communicated, all that I heard as a woman was um, you objectifying your wife. That's what I heard as a woman. And, and maybe, maybe you don't see it that way. Maybe you don't see it that way because you thought you were being funny or something, but, um, you probably don't listen to my live streams anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But just think about that and, you know, set and maybe talk to your own sons. I think you have two sons about what they're learning in school and about, you know, what you want them to learn and about your feelings and perspectives and, and beliefs and what you would like to see for your family and maybe talk to them, you know, how... How you view your own wife and, you know, maybe teach them not to hit on girls and treat women with respect and I know a bunch of things. I know I would be, I would be pretty mortified if I heard my husband talking about that on the internet. I think my children would be more mortified if they've heard it later. I mean, things last on the internet forever. Why, why would you say something like that on the internet? Yeah, it's the same for um, Geek Squad. It's the same for Nuts and Crackers, too. His little closing... His little closing screen thing is uh, some woman's ass and a song, right? Some woman in a bikini and a song. Nuts and Crackers has that. And it's his closing every single time. A woman he's never going to get in his lifetime. An actual real woman that made that clip that he has lifted off somewhere off the internet and not paid for. This is part of it too. And this can get into my whole copyright spiel of nuts and crackers uses as a clip of a woman's ass in a bikini for his closing clip uh, an actual woman like his mother or his sister or a close friend and she got paid by whoever you know created that and that company you know put it out there for men to google over goggle over but he lifted it off from somewhere he's paying no royalties on it he's paying no you know whatever to on it 
He's just taken it for himself to use for free. So he's using that woman's image for free. It's his to take. It's his to take for free. We have really no thanks to her at all. Like, wow, thanks, hot lady, for this clip you put out there. Or, hey, you know, here's you a dollar or whatever. So he's taking it for free. And for what purpose? Uh, nuts and crackers, you can make any kind of closing clip. Why, why a hot woman to objectify? Why is it, why is it your right to take it for free? You treat all women that way. Must be very sad and lonely. Yeah, well, Geek, Geek Squad, have you noticed that uh, there's so... <laughs> Uh, and and this is not me man hating, but when does Tommy Temper live stream? When his family's home, his wife's off there in his background, his kids are off there in the background. Why aren't you spending time with them? I mean, what was that live stream the other day like? Over twelve hours because it started re-recording on itself. Like, you wanna you wanna change? How, you know, culture is changing in your own home. Be present in your own home. Um, I don't think Nuts and Crackers even has a girl. So, I guess it doesn't matter when you're live streaming. You're definitely not getting a girl live streaming. Like, you know, happiness starts at home. Some of you guys aren't even present in your home to participate in that kind of happiness. That's why I only live stream when no one's home. It's not because I'm embarrassed or ashamed of my live stream. It's because when people are home, that's my that's my family time. You guys are not more important than my family. You know, teaching my kids right from wrong, teaching my children to love and accept anyone. Teaching my children that they actually can be anything they want to be. Whether that's president, that's an astronaut, um, since they're both girls right now, if they want to grow up and be boys, whatever. Whatever they want to be. That's what I'm doing. Not fucking live streaming and ignoring my family. And then crying about it. Crying about it's changing. Yeah, Geek Squad. I mean, try not to be too judgmental on someone, but you're right. Your wife, his wife slaves away. Well, I, th I see that they order a lot of takeout. Well, but I think she cooks sometimes, too. I'm just going to take a moment here because I, I don't want to go down too far down the road of like critiquing his life. That's not my objective. It's more crying about things have been in change for a long time. And if you, you knew, if you knew, like, if you just paid attention, you know. All right, I'm going to have to lay off the rainbow for a bit. It's got dry. I'm going to add another layer of yellow over the yellow because it does kind of look a little green and I cleaned up my yellow over there. Ah, these carrots need help. And Wizzy's hair needs help. We'll do the hair, then we'll do carrots.
you know, and there's so much of, oh, it's Antifa, it's Antifa. Guys are funny. Sure, yeah, you see Antifa out there, but Antifa's just people playing dress up. People playing dress up that care about something. And what a lot of them care about is uh, not dying, not being killed for just being themselves. Not some big evil thing. They're not trying to get in your home. Change who you are. Change your life. They're just trying to live their life. They're trying to live. And they're trying to live their life. Sure, some places like Portland, maybe they're a little violent and they burn stuff and that. It's a, you know how you fix that? Get a better police department. That's the thing about what happened in Ottawa uh, with the protest <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll call out, thanks. Um, I'll call out the other side here. Uh, all you lefties, if you had a problem with what was going on with the trucker convoy in Ottawa, which I agree, some of it went too far. Uh, the problem wasn't that they were there. The problem was, um, your city sucked. I mean, your police chief quit in the middle of it. So, I mean, that says so much. So hire, hire and pay for a better, a better government. I mean, and I don't agree with the whole freedom fighting thing, but I did agree with ending the mandates. And I do um, see where a lot of people came to Ottawa for a different reason and a different purpose. And I do see where a lot of it may be spun out of control and everything. But don't blame the people that came. Blame the people, um, your city elected officials that couldn't, like, that couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, right? That didn't, I wouldn't say shouldn't, but couldn't, wouldn't stop it. That's on you. You're the one who elected those people. And hold them accountable. Hold your mayor accountable. Hold your um, city police department accountable. Hold your prime minister accountable. And I know I know a lot of people don't like uh, Justin Trudeau. I don't really have a problem with Trudeau. I mean, I will give this compliment to um, when he used to participate in pride parades, um, it made me cry and made me wish that America had a president that would do that. It's pretty much all I know about Trudeau. Ooh, that's not. That's too dark. I think we need like some dark in there, but like just a little, like just, just a like smidget. Cause it kind of needs, it kind of needs to be like salt and peppery. Well, and not only that, Geek Squad, but they blame. Blame everything on something else. Oh, it was hired protesters. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm of the opinion now we should just be like, uh-huh, sure. And just let things keep going. Because uh, those of us who know, know that's, that's not where things are stem from. That's not where things originate from. Just be like, uh-huh, sure. Okay, buddy. Keep believing what you believe.
He just understood people are just trying to live, live and live their life. Don't really care about you and your home and what's the fuck going on, then uh, you'd be less stressed out about it. Kind of funny now that I think about it. You're stressed out about what people might teach your children. Are your children that easily influenced? My children aren't that easy and influenced. Am I gay? Um, this is the home record. No. Am I straight? No. Do you have any other options you'd like to consider? <laughs> is that it? Just straight or gay? Would you like to see my uh, my tattoo, Susie Home Records, so you can maybe Google it and figure it out? Show it to you. You figure it out, Susie Homemaker or Home Wrecker. Oh, since I, well, I have a lot to say about my own community and the people who hate on it, Susie Homewrecker. Maybe if people hated on your community and was trying to kill you, you'd, uh, you'd have a lot to say too. Oh, wait, no one's trying to kill you. You're living safe and sound, cozy in your home. Don't worry, Susie Homewrecker, if you've got kids and you think that we're going to, uh, you know, influence your kids in some way and overpower your way of teaching them, then uh, you're probably right. It's probably because you didn't teach them the way you wanted them to be taught. Bless your soul. It's okay. You know, uh, Geek Squad, that was what I was thinking the other day when I was painting this, is that, wow, you know, like, my painting of Wizzy looks like actually nicer than actual Wizzy looks. But we're just going to roll with it. Oh. Yeah, well, it's kind of, I'll flip it around here for you in a moment, Susie Home, home Wrecker. Thanks for letting me know it's off screen.
Susie Homewrecker. Go research some history about trans people being killed. Hate crimes. Just recommended the movie earlier uh, from 1999, Boys Don't Cry. Go watch that. Based on a true story. There you go. Now you can see a bit better. It's Wizzy. He's uh, working in a high school cafeteria serving boiled carrots. No, you're right, Susie Holm, Holmwrecker. Hate crime death isn't confined to just one group. Hate that kills is hate that kills multiple groups. Killing people just because you hate them, though, is not a reason to kill someone. Killing someone because you hate how they live their life is not a reason to kill someone. The motive for what? That people, that transgender people get killed by hate crimes? Um, that was the story that was um, the movie that I just recommended. Hold on, let me get my glasses. I'll read you. I'll read you the details of that. I mean, I told the movie PsyOps earlier, but we'll get to the specifics. Here you go, Susie Homewrecker. Uh, the story of Brandon Tina, born December 12, 1972, died December 31, 1993. 
was an American transgender man who was raped and later along with Philip Devine and Lisa Lambert murdered in Humble, Nebraska by John Lauder and Tom Neeson. His life and death were the subject of the films The Brandon Tina Story and Boys Don't Cry. Tina's murder along with those of Matthew Shepard nearly five years later led to increased lobbying for the hate crime laws in the U.S. So this person's murder plus the murder of someone else led to lobbying legislation that changed laws in the U.S. Tina was born December 12, 1972 in Lincoln, Nebraska to Joanne Brandon and their father died in a car accident in Lansdowne County eight months before he was born. He was raised by his mother. Tina and his older sister Tammy lived with their maternal grandmother in Lincoln and before they were reclaimed by their mother when Tina was three years old and Tammy was six. The family resided in Pine Acres Mobile Home Park near, near Northeast Lincoln. Joanne received disability checks and worked as a clerk in the retail store in Lincoln to support the family. As young children, Tina and Tammy were sexually abused by their uncle for several years. Tina sought counsel. Oh, this ties into what I mentioned earlier about North American culture and men sexualizing women and objectifying women. And that sometimes transgenderism comes from women, especially women to men, not always, but sometimes when women just don't want to be sexually objectified anymore. All right. Not always, but sometimes. So, and Tina sought counseling for this in 1991. Joanne remarried from 1975 to 1980, and Tina's family described him as being a tomboy since the early childhood. Tina began identifying as a male during adolescence and dated a female student during this period. His mother rejected his male identity and kept referring to him as her daughter. On several occasions, Tina claimed to be intersexual. Tina and his sister attended St. Mary's Elementary School plus X High School in Lincoln, where some remember Tina as being socially awkward. And during his second year, Tina rejected Christianity after he protested to a priest at Plus X regarding Christian views on abstaining and homosexuality. He also began rebelling at school by violating the school dress code policy to dress in a more masculine fashion. During the first semester of his senior year, a U.S. Army recruiter visited the high school and encouraged students to enlist in armed forces, and he enlisted in the U.S. Army shortly after his 18th birthday, hoping to serve a tour of duty in Operation Desert Shield. However, he failed the written essay exam by listing his sex as Mel. In December of 1990, he went to the holiday skate park with his friends, building, binding his chest to pass as Mel. And in the months nearing his high school graduation, he became unusually outgoing and was remembered by classmates as the class clown. He began skipping school and receiving failing grades. He was compelled from Plus X High in June of 1991, three days before high school graduation. In mid-1991, he began his first major relationship with Heather, and shortly after, he was employed as the gas station attendant in an attempt to purchase a trailer home for himself and his girlfriend. However, his mother disapproved of the relationship and convinced her daughter, Tammy, to follow him to determine where his relationship was platonic or sexual. In January of 1992, he underwent a psychological evaluation, which concluded that he had severe sexual identity crisis, and he was later taken to the Land County, Cri County Crisis Center to ensure that he was not suicidal. He was released from the center three days later and began attending therapy sessions, sometimes accompanied by his mother or sister. He was reluctant to discuss his sexuality during these sessions, but revealed that he had been raped, and the counseling sessions ended two weeks later. In 1993, after some legal trouble, he moved to the Fall City region of Richson County, Nebraska, where he presented as a male. He became friends with several residents, and after he moved into the home of Lisa Lambert, and then he began dating Lambert's friend, 19-year-old Lana Tisdell, and began associating with the ex-convict John Lutter and Marvin Thomas. On December 19, 1993, he was arrested for forging checks. Tisdale used the money from her father to pay his bail. Because he was a, in the female jail section, Tisdale learned he was a transgender. And when Tisdale later questioned him about his gender, he told her he was him, him, 
and sorry, you guys, I have trouble pronouncing this word, a hemp medike and pursuing a sexual change operation. And they continued dating. And this lawsuit regarding the Phil adaptation, Boys Don't Cry, this was disputed by Tisdale. He was arrested and posted in the local paper under his birth name. And thereupon, his acquaintance learned he was assigned female at birth. During a Christmas party, Nelson and Larder grabbed him and forced him to remove his pants, proving to Tisdale that he had a vagina. Tisdale looked only when forced to and said nothing. Lauder and Nelson later assaulted him and forced him into a car. They drove to area by a meatpacking factory in Richmond County where they assaulted and gang raped him. They returned to Nelson's home where he was ordered to take a shower. He escaped from Nelson's bathroom by climbing out the window and going to Tisdale's house. He was convinced by T he was convinced by Tisdale to file a police report, though Nelson and Lauder had warned him to keep their mouth shut or they would permanently shut it for them. He was also went to the emergency room and a standard rape kit was assembled, but later lost. Sheriff Charles B. Lax questioned him about the rape. Reportingly, he seemed interested in his transgender status to the point that he found um, the police questions rude and unnecessary and refused to answer. Nelson and Larder laid, learned later learned of the report and began searching for him. They did not find him. And three days later, when the police questioned them, Sheriff Lax declined to have them arrested because what kind of person was him? The first few times they arrested him, she put her or the, the police the police said this exactly. What kind of person was she? The first few times we arrested her, she was putting herself off as a guy. Around 1 a.m. on December 31st, Nelson Lauder drove to Lambert's house and broke in. They found Lambert in bed and demanded to know where he was. Lambert refused to tell them, and they searched and found him under a blanket at the foot of the bed. The men asked Lambert if there was anyone else in the house, and she replied that Philip Devine, who was at the time dating Tisdale's sister, was staying with her, and the Duljan shot him in the stomach. Nelson testified in court that he had notified um him that he was twitching and asked Lauder for a knife in which Nelson stabbed him in the chest to ensure that he was dead. Nelson later testified he shot Lambrant in the stomach, leaving the room to find Divine and then returning with him. Nelson shot Lambrant a separate time and the two men took Divine into the living room, set him on the couch and shot him twice. Nelson then returned to the bedroom where he where he shot Lambrant a few more times and the two men left through the weapons and gloves on a frozen river and returned to Fall City. They were arrested that afternoon and after which Nelson told deputies he had witnessed John Letter shoot three people to death in Hombret. That's right. Three people died in this hate crime. Teens buried um, or he was buried in Lincoln Memorial Cemetery in Nebraska. Hold on. I'm just going to skip ahead and just kind of skim it. So basically, it just gets into the court case and the legal legacy and all that. So uh, when, when I talk about hate crimes and murder and people killing people, no, Susie Homewrecker, did you just not listen? Did you just not listen to the story at all? You can Google this yourself. Just Google the story behind the movie, Boys Don't Cry, and you can find this story of um, Brandon Tina on your own, and you can read it yourself since you weren't listening. So no, it was one trans person and two people that supported the transgender person and two individuals that murdered all three of them because of hate. So when, there you go. There's your story. I'm done with you. I'm not in the mood for haters like you. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you a moment, but if not, then I'm just going to boot you off because we don't have time for people who hate. Learn how to YouTube and make your own channel and talk what you feel over there. What else would it be, Susie Homewrecker? You're talking about one of the two cases that led to laws changing in the U.S. regarding hate crimes.
So I'm pretty sure you know the story was well covered. I actually think um, Geek um, Geek Squad um, Susie Homewrecker is one of Kerfuffle's alts. Kerfuffle, if that's one of your alts, you don't need to be in here in an alt. You could just be here as yourself. I'd probably actually be a little nicer to you if you came as yourself. And I wouldn't treat you like some just random stranger that walked off the YouTube streets. It's a difference. It's a difference when you're a known character versus a just rando. And Kerfuffle, if you're out there and this is not your alt, sorry. You know, you have so many alts. I can't keep them all track. I don't have, um, I have Tommy Temper's little uh, alt book. Because i um, very disappointed in him that he's not using like sparkle pins and stickers. And he's kind of late to this whole making an alt book game. Um, by the way, hi, Seashells. How are you today? Seashells, what, what's, what's up with Robbie? Why hasn't Robbie done the challenge that he started and created? Very disappointed in him. Thought you were, I thought, I thought this was your week to be in charge of Robbie. Keep them focused and on task. He's procrastinating. Well, very disappointed in him. Gonna have to revoke his leadership status. Couldn't even complete the first assignment he gave out. Feel like that's good for the carrots. Like anything else would just be overlapping carrots over each other. Yeah, but I don't think Wizzy would ever grace my chat, Geek Squad. If he did, he should at least Thank, thank me for painting him so nice. That's because I'm left-handed, Susie Homewrecker.
You'll see it when I move the brush. Very demanding. Do you know someone named Newfie Princess? Kind of critical like them. You guys can join up and jump on a panel together. Thanks, Geek Squad. <laughs> Just have faith. Have faith in the layering. I think the peas help too, right? Because subconsciously, peas and carrots go together. I'll put the background music back on. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that would have been a good call. I'm um, chilled. I'm doing meatballs over here on the end. Is this what I do on my channel all the time? What, what do you mean? Paint? Do you not know how to look at someone's channel history? Are you, are you a boomer, Susie Homemaker? Because, like, you could just go click on a channel and kind of scroll. And say, oh, this person kind of makes this kind of content. Do we need to teach you how to internet? Are you using a flip phone? This explains why, why you have comprehension difficulties. Now on my other live streams, Susie Homewrecker, I just um I just give out money constantly. Hundreds of dollars every day. Taking a break this week. Waiting for my money laundering transfer to go through. International. International money laundering transfer. Because I'm an international terrorist. Very big in the banana industry. Sell bananas all over the world. Stuff the bananas. There's always money in the banana stand. Stuff money into the bananas. Transport it all over the world. Uh, 
Uh, no, no. I do, um, do you have a colon, Susan? Susie Home Record, do you have a colon? You get your colon checked often? If you don't get it checked, you might have colon cancer. It's very important to get your colon checked regularly by your doctor. Thanks, Chilled. And thanks, Chilled, for speaking up yesterday. You were spot on. Uh, Susie Homemaker, how do you define a colonizer? Like, is that, um, is that someone with two Caucasian parents? I don't have two Caucasian parents. Is that like a, an American term? North American term? know what it means yeah thanks chilled no you, you I mean I was kind of thrown off from from the beginning so no you called it out right and went for a walk Maybe, maybe, uh, seashells. Though, I don't recall, like, I don't recall Queenie being able to type this fast. We all know the only person who could type this fast. Mystery. It's a chat mystery today. Paranoid much? Nah, not really conversation do you see me being paranoid do my peas look paranoid tell you these are not paranoid peas Um, Susie Homemaker. 
You, your name's too long, first of all. Let's shorten it. We'll just call you Susie. Susie, so this one is about... About Wizzy. Do you know who Wizzy is? What you see is what you get. And um, this is a dream I had about him. He was working in a high school cafeteria and serving boiled carrots. So my inspiration comes from dreams sometimes. I mean, it depends. And this one I did a collage of before I started painting it. So let me pull that up here. Because it makes more sense if you don't know, which you probably don't. But Wizzy's actually has a Libra print bathrobe that he used to wear on his live stream. Weirdly enough, people don't know that. Like I've only watched about five or ten minutes of his show when I grabbed this picture last year. And um, yeah, so it's just just a representation of him. And his Libra print, or his zebra print robe he wore on a live stream. Oh, thanks, Christina W. All right, that's, that's a good job for peas for now. Susie, I'll get back to your question here in a moment. Just, you know, painting these meatballs. Because I, I think you'll want to see the, the Carl painting. I know, right, Christina W? Dude should be in here thanking me. All right, Susie Homewrecker, here's you some history of the paintings that have transpired so far. This one here is Auntie Nan Nan. This is a representation of Nancy McMonick. And um, this was, she filed a copyright strike on my channel for a video I lifted off Carl. Do you know who Carl is, Susie Homewrecker? Probably not, because you're such a noob and a boomer. But Carl's another character here in this circle. Oh yeah, this this is the first painting I ever made. Uh, but this woman actually kind of looks like this. Her hair looks like this from the photo. And she has that about... She has more wrinkles than this. I just am so new at painting that um, it was very new to paint someone with a bunch of wrinkles. And these here are AI robots. They're chasing some monarch butterflies to eat them to gain the energy to make AI art. Because... Auntie Nan Nan hates AI art. That's why she filed a copyright strike on my channel. I lifted a video from Carl, did a bunch of AI stuff to it, and she copyright strike that, and she copyright strike a community post that was completely based on the original of this photo that um, I did AI filters on it. So we just painted an original, an Auntie Nan Nan original, because she can't copyright strike that. Then here's the second painting, Susie Homewrecker. This is a, a challenge I did with the Robert Escobar show. 
Yeah, it is a real person. You could go to her channel, Nancy. Here, I'll get it for you. I'll get you the link. You could go find it for yourself. Give me a moment. Getting that link for you here, you can go find it for yourself. I'm not sure which uh, video of hers has um, this image of her. But she doesn't have many videos on her channel and you can figure it out and find it. So there's, there's her channel link. So she, um, one of hers videos, she accidentally drops her camera and you can see her. No, I didn't steal her art. I painted her based on her image. It's a flattering representation of her. Now, this one here is about a dream that I had about Carl. I had two dreams about Carl. This one, uh, he gave me a hug and patted me on the head and told me everything was going to be all right. And he smelled like Hawaiian Tropic suntan. And this one was a dream. Carl was, um, old Carl was telling young Carl some information. And there was some kids playing soccer in the street. Oh, yeah, I lifted a video off his channel. Um, and then put an AI filter on it and three layers of music to it. And some text. And if anyone should have filed the copyright strike, it should have been Carl because I took the video from his channel. But um, he didn't because Nancy filed the copyright strike against Carl and against myself. I didn't even know Nancy had a channel until um, she sent me the copyright strike. And, um, and then in that was a link to her channel. She also incorrectly filled out the copyright strike information. You're supposed to put your legal name on it. And she... Um, She didn't. So she lied. She lied on a legal document, which is still getting worked out by YouTube. It's all automated. Yeah, yeah, Susie, I, I lifted, stole whatever from Carl, uh, a clip out of his video. I was preserving uh, my favorite part of it. And I added to it because Nancy was trying to talk to him in the chat where he had already left for the evening. And I was playing, I was delivering a message to Carl from Nancy. I was playing mail service. I was being helpful. I was being a carrier pigeon for Nancy. Um, so she, that message she wanted to give to Carl could get to him. And I put it into a short for him and tagged him on it. And, um, you know, she copyright strike for the original video. She just hates AI art. Maybe, Susie, you hate AI art too. And that's why you're here enjoying my show because paintings, these paintings are not AI art. This is all, you know, old school watercolor here. So thank you for um, participating. Thank you for appreciating art. And, you know, it's old school formatting. Real Jim. Jim, you are. Well, uh, Susie, I'm sure you could go find a channel with more beautiful watercolors. I mean, I didn't say I was a great watercolor artist. I said I'm a beginner. And this is now, you've seen them. This is my third painting. And, um, you know, I'm just learning. I don't think this is my medium. This is just my AI substitute. But thank you for your feedback. I'll be sure to write it down on a comment card and hand it to the boss.
Is everything okay at home? Yeah, everything's great. I mean, it's the middle of the day here. But yeah, everything's fantastic. Is everything okay at your home, Susie Homewrecker? Are you all right? Do you need help? Blink twice if it's not okay. Chat's got you, girl. Oh, Geek Squad, do you want me to share um, Susie Homewrecker's uh, channel? Oh, the complaint line phone number. Your home's wrecked. Did you do it to yourself? It's probably a pill for that. Susie, why, why are you not making no content on your channel? Oh, I was getting you the complaint line. Hold on. Gosh, you're, you're a very demanding chatter. Hold on. I sent it to Christina W. Christina W, we had that phone number, uh, what, a couple days ago? Ah, here it is. All right, Susie, Susie Homewrecker, write this number down. Oh, here, I'll even do it better for you because I'm sure you're like a bit of a, a, a noob here. I'll write it down for you, put it here on the chat. Here you go, Susie Homewrecker. So, official complaint line there, 401-285-2079. Call that anytime and file your complaint. About me or Christina W. We, we split the cost of the complaint line. No, that's the complaint line. I'm international. You want to pay for an international phone call? They'll hook you up. Just call and ask for my international phone line. Tell them you have no problem paying $3 a minute to call international. They'll give you, they'll hook you right up with my phone number. Or find Nancy. She has it. She's the only person I've given it to. She'll hook you up, girl. My secretary, Susie Homemaker, my secretary answers that line.
don't you have a personal personal assistant it's my personal assistant everyone should have a personal assistant in their life they help me run my banana business don't be racist Susie homewrecker we live in a global village If Microsoft can hire people in India and a lot of these cell phone companies and all the at-home Comcast and DirecTV and if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Do you tip Surrey, Susie Homewrecker? Sounds like that bitch works hard for you. You should tip her more. Well, be sure to leave that feedback in your complaint. I mean, Susie Homewrecker, you just sound like so much advice. You should, uh, you should consider running a third world country. You seem to know so much. Have you ever considered being a mod on Reddit? They're always looking for people of your skill and caliber. How do you feel about wrenches, Susie Homewrecker? Yeah, a mod, a moderator on Reddit definitely sounds um, right up, right up your alley. I don't know. They'd, they'd have to see. They'd have to see a photo of your neck beard, though. Do you have a neck beard? It's kind of required. You'll have to grow one to become a Reddick mod. Nope, Susie Homemaker Wrecker. I don't need mods. You wanna know why? Mods are power trippy. All they do is uh, do things based on their feelings. What's Reddick? Reddick is an online form for sharing information, which is why I think you would be amazing, marvelous over there because you just seem to have so much information to share with the right audience.
Susie Homewrecker. It's not at all like my OnlyFans page. It's definitely very different than OnlyFans. OnlyFans is definitely where all the action is at. I mean, that's where I sell most of my bananas. Those money stuffed bananas, they're a big seller over on OnlyFans. Now, I could probably use Reddick to advertise, but Reddick is mostly text-based, some images, but OnlyFans is really where it's at because you can get the video, you can get custom content, you can sell your bananas. Do you have any bananas, Susie Homewrecker? Because I can sell you some bananas. All you have to do is um, call my complaint line and give them your credit card and your address and they will ship you some bananas right away. If you lost it, I still have it here on the paper for you. Here you go. So, official complaint line, but also you can order yourself some, quote, sexy bananas. They hook you right up. Then you maybe want to be a home wrecker. You would be a home winner. Change your life. So glad you came today, Susie Home Wrecker, so I could change your life. It was my pleasure to be of service to you today. That's my porn music in the background. Um, Susie, Susie Homewrecker. Here, I'll bring you a little closer to it. You can really enjoy it. Think about those bananas. Thank you so much, Susie Homewrecker, for your interest in my bananas. I see you've um, been in the chat for a bit, so I hope you um, hope you order the six-pack of bananas. That's the best value. You could buy one banana, three bananas, six or twelve, but six is the best value. So I hope you enjoy enjoy the bananas once they're delivered to your home. You have um, just standard shipping, or you can get express shipping, overnight shipping. I recommend the Express Overnight Shipping for the most fresh bananas you can receive.
I believe, um, Geek Squad, I believe that um, Susie Homewrecker has um, left us for a bit to go explore her banana options. I know, I know, and I was going to start throwing out wrenches to all of you just, just to annoy her. She didn't really, she didn't really stay for the whole, the whole entertainment there that we could have, we could have had together. She will be missed. Maybe gave her the banana a little too soon. So, um, Geek Squad, I don't know how to do what you're talking about. Okay, so you're saying Studios Premium. So I have YouTube Premium and I have YouTube Studios. What is YouTube Studios Premium? Yeah, I can Google. I can get my own tech support help, um, Geek Squad. I mean, unless you're bored and you want to share. But if not, I'll just Google and figure it out. Because I like learning new things. And I like learning new ways to learn to use tools. Because that's what everything is, right? Is a tool. Especially the bananas. Just cleaning up Wizzy's robe here. Not all sections like got really good in black. So just kind of doing some cleanup work. Um, Daisy, I addressed you the other day um, about that. So I did find where your comment was. And I'll repeat it again since you're here. And I hope you stick around to listen to it for a second time. So Daisy, um, somewhere I said that, like I think it was in a chat that I wrote that um, I didn't recall you being in my chat. And it's true, I didn't recall that and maybe you have been and I did apologize if I got that information wrong I did say I was sorry for that but when you were saying spoon lied spoon lied you were up on nuts and crackers panel and you were talking about the situation with telescope and sort of implying that I lied about any part of that and that was there was nothing I lied about what I said about that situation because I only spoke to what I saw which really didn't involve you or 
at all because I didn't see the part that transpired with you. I just said that telescope with a, an event um, with his friends who had a child. That the child was handed a phone that the child could read the chat. You lied too, Daisy. You said that child couldn't read, but we all saw that child could read. And um, so you lied too. And that's the part I spoke to. So when you were talking to Nuts and Crackers, you said Spoon lied and you guys were talking about that situation. You didn't clarify that it was about you being in my chat or not being like in my chat. So I'm sorry that I got it wrong that um, you've been in my chat before. I don't know when and I don't recall and it doesn't really matter. I mean, thanks for coming and hanging out. And I apologize for getting that part wrong wherever I typed it or said it. But I hope you do apologize too for the lie you told about that child not being able to read because we all could see that child could read. And in when I spoke about this the other day, which I mean, I guess you could go back and li listen to the live stream if you want, but I'll say it here too, is um, you should have had some situational awareness seeing that there was a child holding a phone um, and able to read the chat. Like I saw it and um, like just have some manners and be respectful and not type things in a chat that a child could see. So, I mean, we could comment on, you know, telescopes, behaviors and actions and all that, which is a whole separate thing. But this is the child could read and you were typing things in a chat that a child shouldn't be reading out loud. So, you know, it's just really easy to say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. I should have not done that. Um, I didn't recognize the situation or whatever. I mean, that part to me is on you. Um, like... That's just my opinions on it. Like if you have opinions on telescope or on that child's parents, then that's fine. I mean, you can have those opinions. But, and you know, maybe the child shouldn't have been handed the phone in the chat knowing that, you know, telescope doesn't have eyes on his chat. Yeah, that might have been a bad decision of telescopes. But we could see on the screen the child was holding the phone and reading the chat. So that little bit of parts on you as well. Well, Daisy, the um, A Beautiful Day reposted the link for the video. I don't know if she still has it up, but um, I mean, that's the part I saw. And then I rewatched it when A Beautiful Day shared the link just to confirm. Yeah, OK, I saw what I saw. So Telescope had his camera. The child had another phone in his her hand and um, she was reading the chat. And I don't know what you what lies am I telling, Daisy? The child could read. That's not a lie. The child had a phone in her hand and was reading the chat. How is that a lie? I'm not saying what the child, I'm not saying what you wrote about the child because I didn't see that part. I'm not saying that um, specifically what the child said, but the child could read. So how's that a lie? It's not a lie. I don't care what other people said, Daisy. I care about what I'm saying to you. The child could read. The child could, was reading chat. And you should have been situationally aware of that. And not wrote whatever you wrote. Because it hurt that child's feelings. I mean, that's that's the core of this. Is you hurt that child's feelings. Um, I could say that the one thing that I saw was you were calling the child a boy when that child was a girl. And to me, what my perception of it is, is that um, you were doing it intentionally. And I remember that little girl saying, um, because I rewatched it, um, like, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl and being like the tone of her voice, like, did have you gone back and re listened to what was up and available? Did you not hear the tone of the child's voice? You hurt her feelings. And to argue about that in a chat room, especially to someone like myself, who is a mother who has a daughter that age of that child, if that was my child, I'd be really upset. Well, I wouldn't hand my phone to a child to read chat because I don't trust none of you. So I would definitely be different. But Daisy, you hurt her feelings. How do you know you didn't hurt her feelings? Have you talked to her since then? Do you know that child? Have you talked to her? Have you spoken to her? 
No, we're not talking about the actions of the adults or about, you know, telescopes choices. You wrote something, that child read it, which you said she didn't know how to read. And it was something that you intentionally wrote. You knew she was a girl and you said she was a boy and she read it or yeah, she read it. That's right. I said that right. You knew she was a girl and you said she was a boy and she read it and she the tone of her voice go back and re-listen to it Daisy and imagine yourself as that child I mean haven't you grown up with people making fun of you and for being tall and being um kind of tomboyish like haven't you had that experience in your life and I'm not saying this to be mean because as girls we've all had this experience of people putting us down I'm saying it as from a place of compassion and, and as a woman, as a woman who's grown up, you know, with hard struggles about how we're treated by people, how we're treated by bullies, how we're treated by men, how we're treated by people our whole lives. That's right, Daisy. So just if Beautiful Day still has it up, just go listen to that part. And I get that you're getting a lot of other stuff about all the other stuff and that involves you with other people. I'm just here doing my own thing. Well, I mean, Daisy, you're a liar, too, because you said that child couldn't read. And we all saw it. I mean, we're all liars in some way at some times. So, sorry. Sorry that I didn't remember that you'd been in my chat. I wasn't writing that, like, intentionally, like, you've never been here. I just legitimately did not recall. We all are human and we all make mistakes. And Daisy, it's very easy to say, you know what? I made a mistake. I didn't realize that child could read. And if they read something I wrote and it hurt their feelings, I'm sorry. That's not very hard to do. You don't have to agree with anything else that's being said or about anyone else's behaviors or actions. Just have some self-reflection on that. So you will, you will never apologize for hurting a child's feelings. Why? Why? Because they're, they're the child of some lefties. You want me to get my children on stream for you? You can make fun of them. You want to be like Queenie and tell my daughter that she's, she's inbred? She's fetal alcohol syndrome? Um, what's some other things? Queenie said a whole bunch of things to my daughter, my older daughter. You want to be like her? My daughter will go head to head with you. You want to bully and pick on children just because they are children of someone from the left or because the children themselves have lefty views. They're at school right now. But I can make that happen. Well, if you guys want Telescope to apologize for something, um, you have to go and take that up with Telescope on his channel because I've been getting trying to get Telescope to apologize for a lot of things for months. So good luck with that. Not sitting here defending Telescope.
I'm Susie Homewrecker. I take responsibilities for a lot of my own actions. And if you had listened to my channel and all the previous things, there have been times where I've called out Telescope on a live stream. I've called out Lisa Hurley on a live stream. I've called out Al Munson on a live stream. So, um, and ask people to be accountable and take responsibility for their own actions and behaviors. And I've definitely taken accountability for my own choices and mistakes. They're all right there anytime you want to listen to them. See, don't generalize all people as the same. I don't generalize all people as the same. Everyone's a unique individual. And let's see, up thread, Daisy. Daisy talking about how the military um, needs needs more real men. Fucking recruit for them, Daisy. Recruitment numbers are down. At this point in time, if the U.S. goes to war with China, you're Chinese now, in my opinion. We don't have the re recruitment. They So here's, here's true, true facts for you on recruitment. Um, numbers are down across all branches of service. I can't speak for all branches of service, because, but I can speak for the Navy because that's the one I participate to. The minimum or the maximum age to join has been raised by a couple years. The testing requirements, like the score, has been lowered. The bonuses has been raised, the amount, like the bonuses you get paid, and the numbers are still too low. So there's your facts. No politics, neither side, no political lines. There's your fact. Recruitment numbers are down. So, um, you know, you want to see changes, get involved. Oh, Daisy, I fucking I'll probably lie many, many times. It's not the first time, but I did apologize. And you did kind of twist it when you're on Nuts and Crackers to make it to be applicable to the situation that you were dealing with Telescope and not something so trivial as, You've been in my chat before and I said the wrong thing and said, I don't recall you ever being in my chat. Like, let's, let's be real. And you're kind of deflecting. You're deflecting from, you hurt a child's feelings. Unintentionally, perhaps, but you did. And it's really so simple to say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to that child. You don't even have to fucking apologize to Telescope or anyone else. Just make it a general apology out to the Internet. I didn't realize I hurt a child's feelings. I am sorry. Why is that so hard? Why, why don't you want to apologize for hurting a child's feelings? Daisy, you did too. You were on Nuts and Crackers talking about the situation with Telescope. That was the subject. The situation with Telescope. And then you included me in that saying Spoon lied. I didn't lie about the situation with Telescope. I was not honest or I lied or I was untrue about you being in my chat before, which has absolutely fucking nothing to do with the situation with Telescope. So you guys were talking about the situation with Telescope. You included in that subject matter Spoon lied. And it wasn't about the situation at Telescope at all. Okay, see, and then you're getting into the judgment, Daisy. I don't care that the child shouldn't have been on there. Like, that's just being judgmental and deflecting from you hurt a child's feelings intentionally or unintentionally. You're too focused on being judgmental of what it was and not focusing on what happened. Even if it was on accident, 
If you accidentally bump into someone, do you say you're sorry? If you accidentally trip someone, do you say you're sorry? Perhaps you accidentally hurt this child's feelings, but you did. And you can apologize with, you could even, you know, put out a, I don't agree with what Telescope did or the people, the child's parents did or blah, 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 whatever. But I'm sorry if I hurt that child's feelings. This isn't about Telescope, Daisy. You want to talk about Telescope, Telescope's channel, Telescope's actions and behaviors, take it up with Telescope or someone that actually cares about Telescope. Because I've already, I've already had my rounds with Telescope and things Telescope's done. And I, well, I actually have gone back, Daisy, and seen how long you've been around these circles. You've been around for a long time. So it's not like... You've only been here a couple months. You've been around for more than a year. You used to hang out on ants chats. And, um, you know, telescope is the way telescope is. So, I mean, you know, it shouldn't be new to you. Daisy, the child wasn't a boy. The child was born a girl and is a girl. Has nothing to do with, with transgender children, transgender issues or anything like that. The child was born a girl, identifies a girl, is a girl. And from my perception is you intentionally called, called the, um, called the child a boy to hurt their feelings and the response of the child sound the tone of their voice um no daisy i'm on prism and i can't do that maybe if you actually learned how to live stream yourself and actually did it then you would understand more of the technology so no i can't screenshot and talk at the same time on prism not with a camera running i can't do that it's technically not possible Daisy, for this particular situation, transgender is not the issue. Transgender and transgender children are not the issue with this particular situation and this child. The child, born a girl, identifies a girl, and you call the child a boy just to be mean and nasty. And if you weren't trying to be intentionally mean and nasty, then the child was still hurt by what you said by their tone of voice. And you can apologize and whatever else you might have said. I don't know. And even a screenshot wouldn't, um, wouldn't like convey the conversation. You would need like a screen recording. Yes, Telescope does have a stepson. That's true. Like a teenage stepson. That child was not Telescope's stepson. His stepson's much older than that. It's not the same per Daisy. It's a big world. There's many people out there. That child was the daughter of the people that Telescope was spending time with. And later Telescope shared that that child has um, like siblings with um, like, I don't think it's mental health, but some type of disability. And so that child rarely gets a chance to, to go out and be a child and have fun. That whole event was about fun, like going to a gymnasium and seeing other kids in costumes and getting candy. It was a fun event. It wasn't his stepson. It was his friend's child.
Okay, and Daisy, you're you're allowed to have that opinion about that child's mom. I don't, I mean, my honest opinion, um, yeah, sure, that mom probably should have not handed her phone to the child. Telescope should have been aware that fuckery was happening in his chat and not to let the child read it or shut down his live stream, one or the other, something like that. But situations happen where maybe adults and parents don't make the best of decisions or they make decisions that are none of our business because it's not our child and none of our fucking business. That's a whole separate issue of you weren't situationally aware of what you were seeing on your screen and you said something, you typed something that the child read out loud, the child you said that couldn't read and you hurt their feelings. And that doesn't matter the decisions that Telescope made or the, the parents of that child made. That's separate from your choice of behavior and your choice of actions. And that you're sitting here saying you don't want to apologize for hurting a child's feelings. Sorry, you guys, I turned off the background music. Daisy, stop being so fearful of the God mod thing. You are such a small channel. It's not going to impact you. You know, run, start your live streams with no chat on at all. And then you don't even have to worry about it. You've already told Tommy Temper, you know, you're not going to have mods or you're going to be really selective. I mean, you can worry about that stuff later. Just start live streaming. Don't be afraid. Turn off your chat and you don't even have to deal with any, any of these characters. You know, the, the help that I gave you was generally out of just, I think everyone that has a desire or interest in running their own channel should. And I mean, all these, all these panels just use you for entertainment. People that pretend to be your friends, you're just entertainment. Even people, people who have the same political values as, as them. You're just the entertainment. So, you know, just do your own thing. Then you could go talk about these, these, cons you can, you can start, you know, your own rants about how you feel about that situation and your, your thoughts or opinions on, um, telescopes, choices, the parents' choices, all that. You could do all that on your own channel in your own space as often as you want. There's no limit. You can, you can kick off your own live stream and rant as much as you want. That's the nice thing about having your own space. You can do whatever you want on it. But you shouldn't be afraid.
And to, to use that fear as an excuse is... Just, you know, don't. Don't be afraid. It's so, so unlikely to impact you. And if it does, then ask for help. Even though there's a lot of people upset with you right now, there will still be people that help you, but it won't. But worst case scenario, Daisy, the whatever the God mod is, which I don't think it's actually a hack or anything like that. I think um, certain live streamers were dumb and let people be mods on their channel. And then those people changed their names, their uh, usernames. And, um, but you know, whatever. Um, so worst case scenario, right? It actually is a hack. And they come to your channel and they mess with you. The worst thing they're going to do is block people from your channel. You have ultimate control to go in and unblock anyone. I don't think any of that's going to happen, but that's, that's the worst case scenario. It's nothing you can't overcome. And you're letting, you're letting fear dictate your freedom. How sad is that? All these fucking freedom fighters are letting fear dictate their freedom. I think she wandered off Christina W. And they went on a laptop. I got it. Oh no, she's still here. You guys keep going on. She's just sitting back and lurking. Daisy, don't be afraid of the chat. It's just a chat. You guys, don't pile on her. She's just one person. I mean, I get it. You guys are all upset with her and you don't agree with her and all that. But it's really hard when you're one person and you feel like a whole chat's coming at you. I'm going to summarize that it's a situation that a lot of adults should have known better. Daisy and Ron should have known better. Telescope should have known better.
not go so much put it on the parents because parents didn't know. Like telescope knows the the um, the circle and the tone of his chat. Just in my opinion, in my opinion, like I would never hand you guys to my daughters. Hi, Wheat and Shaw. I caught some of your live stream earlier. You were reading something. Yeah, door knocker. That, that's, that's it. Everyone, everyone makes mistakes. I think it was bad judgment on s several adults' part. And, you know, we're all human and we all make mistakes. Uh, door knocker, I actually, I'm glad you're here. I have a question for you. Speaking of adults making mistakes and apologies, has Jeff apologized to you for the tone he used on you? Oh my gosh, eons ago. Because I'm still um, protesting Jeff for the way he spoke to you. You know, talk about other adults that don't don't own up to their their. Errors of judgment and being human. Thanks, Wheat and Shaw. Uh, Wheat and Shaw, I'm going to put your channel link here. If you guys don't know this person, Wheat and Shaw, they're my one of my favorite um, streamers. They do live streams and silly videos. Okay, thanks, door knocker. I love how, like, people just, like, especially in this circle, just kind of forget. Like, you know, they do something. You call them out on it. Like, hey, what you did wasn't cool. Like, with door knocker situation, the tone of voice Jeff used with um, door knocker was not okay. And especially um, being that door knocker is the spouse of a military member that was door knocker. I don't quite have this story totally spot on. Was you did your spouse deploy that night or were they deploying the next night? Um, just clarify that for me so I tell the story right. So door knocker spouse was either deploying that night or the next night. And Jeff just I can't remember all the things that was said. I just know that the tone of voice he used and um, that they were arguing about something. And it's OK to disagree with people. But the way that Jeff was speaking to door knocker and the way that he was talking down to her and the tone of voice he was using is just not how like military treats each other a certain way. A certain level of respect, even if you're in disagreement, there's a different kind of yelling of like, we're, we're fighting because we disagree about something. But this was more like a, a disrespectful tone of voice. And it's just not how we treat each other. And ever since then, I've been holding out for Jeff to apologize. And instead of saying, you know what? Yeah, my tone of voice I w or the way I was talking to door knocker, that wasn't cool. Hey, door knocker, I'm sorry about that. We're still going to disagree about whatever we're disagreeing about, but I'm sorry for the, the tone of voice and the way I spoke to you. No, just ignore it. Forget like it never happened. And uh, see, Spoon's over here and I don't forget things. And I told Door Knocker I would have her back on this and, well, that's still where I'm at. 
until Jeff apologizes. Why is it so hard for people to apologize? I apologize all the time. I do fucked up shit all the time. Sit here and admit I did it and say I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, he had, so he had already deployed. He had already deployed door knocker and Jeff said you were lying about, like, that's so, so common in these circles. Someone else has done that to me. Oh, it was kind of the queenie situation about calling me Margaret. She kept telling me I was lying and that I was Margaret. And I'm like, don't you think I know my own name, bitch? <laughs> oh, and looky there, I was right. That's right. I wasn't Margaret because I actually know my own name. No, you're lying. You don't know who you are. <laughs> uh, thanks, door knocker. I didn't quite know the situation. I just knew you guys were fighting about something. Now it's even more ridiculous. Because, you know, you know what goes on in your own house. Oh, that'll be cool. Oh, um, we inshallah, congratulations on getting a job. I know last time I hung out in your space, you were uh, going to start looking for a job. So congratulations on getting a job. Here, I'll get you um, Geeks and Squad's channel. Guys, make me do work here. There you go. There you go, Wheaton Shaw. There's, um, there is Geek Squad's channel. So you're only going to work 12 to 16 hours a week. Yeah, that's not a lot. But, you know, you got to get, you got to get what you can. And hey, we inshallah you're ahead of so many. Because so many just won't get a job. So... Congratulations. Congratulations not being, you know, a grifting loser. Contributing to the workforce. Blah, blah, blah. I bring my work to a live stream too. I'll show it here in a moment. I got to I want to finish on painting this sleeve here. Uh, door knocker. I haven't listened to Jeff ever since I he went and apologized to you. Like I don't even I don't even give him the view. I think I still have like a membership on his channel that like auto renews just because I'm too lazy to go figure out how to turn it off. So sorry my boycott's not fully 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 committed there. 
because I signed up, I signed up memberships on like every, every channel that had a membership, whether I like the person or not, like I'm all about supporting all the small channels, whether I like you or not. So if anyone had mem like their memberships turned on, I am. Um... Oh no, door knocker. It's totally okay. It's totally okay. You can do that. Um, I run a very like loose ship here. We don't have any mods and we don't have any timeouts and we don't have any um any of the the power trippy stuff and you could talk about whatever you want in my chat. It's totally fine. That goes for anyone. Uh door door knocker. It also means you're 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 not like safe and protected here either. Or not you specifically, but anyone. Like if you're here talking about something and someone comes in here and wants to disagree with you, I just let it all fly. Sometimes those things work out, like people hash their issues out and they come to a resolution and sometimes you're just fighting for the sake of fighting. So I just tell everyone like either block the person personally, uh, fight back or take a break from YouTube chat because I kind of just leave it open for anything. So don't feel like you have to apologize and you're welcome to talk about whatever you want here. And Wheat and Shaw, like, stocking shelves is hard work. Like, hard on your body. Like, the, all that, like, you know, like, bending and lifting and moving and twisting and all that. That's really hard on your body and especially. I understand um, about getting hit by cars. I used to ride my bicycle a lot in my 20s and got hit really good by a car. Like flew up in the air, landed on the sidewalk. Broke a bunch of bones. That, that kind of thing. But we all live another day. I think I need, I need like, I want to make the inside of the robe like black. But I also want to add another layer to the hands. So I'm just going to carefully fill this in. I think I need to like look up what a knot looks like to finish that off. And go do another layer on the hands. And then I was going to do like some kind of bottles or bowls over here or something. I'm not really sure. And I might have made like a, <laughs> I'm looking at it now and like, oh, I kind of messed up. Um, 
<laughs> kind of messed up like um, the, the perspective over here. Maybe we just leave that vague over there. Ah, uh, that's, that's a rough decision, Wheat and Shaw, making the choice to pay internet or pay your rent. I mean, you need your rent because you need a place to live, but... And Wheat and Shaw, don't you have a couple roommates? Oh yeah, you gotta fill, yeah, fill the rooms in the house. I get that, Wheat and Shaw. So we used to have a big house in the U.S., eight bedrooms. And uh, not that, like, you know, I had an income in that, but the house was so big, I just rented out um, some of the rooms and um, just to fill the space and something to do, I don't know. But like, it kind of, it helped with a lot of, of the bills and that too. Like it was a good experience, but it also was a process though to like rent out the rooms, right? Like I had to place the ad, interview the people. The part I didn't like about it was like interviewing the people never let you know if like they would be people who like, I just wanted people who would like keep their room clean, right? So any type of interview or even them showing you their bank statements or whatever, didn't really show you if they would, you know, be... A decent human and and I'm not like super clean I'm just like you know I don't want bugs in my house or anything like that but interviewing them never told you that kind of stuff about what kind of people they were and while it was a interesting life experience so glad to also just be on our own and not doing that And then I'm so sympathetic. I had a guy living in the house for over a year who didn't pay rent because he lost his job. And I tried to make a deal with him like, hey, if you could just sweep him off the floors, we'll call that a trade. And um, but he never did. I was still sweeping and mopping the floors. And I just felt so sad that I just never asked. Like he was just he was a nice guy. Um, he just um, I, I couldn't tell him to get out. So. Not really like the best of landlords there. Yeah, and people don't read the listings. I had one guy who moved into my house. Um, who like I only had three rules for roommates. And that, that I went over in my interview. Um, I can't even remember them all. Like, I can't remember what the one of them is. I only remember two. One was like, don't be screaming in the middle of the night. <laughs> that was one of my rules, something like that. But the big one was um, don't smoke pot in the house. Like, I don't care if you do it outside the house. None of that. But don't do it in the house because it's a. it was like an open ventilation system. And for me personally, it, um, it makes me hyper paranoid. And it's my own fucking house. Right. So I don't need to be there high and super paranoid in my own house. So that was the rule of um, don't smoke pot in the house. And um, if either, like we lived in a state where it's legal. So there was plenty of places you could go rent where it wasn't a problem. And I never had a problem until one guy who like day two smoking in his room, trying to lie about it where it was obvious, like you could smell it through the vent system where it was coming from. And then uh, that same like. He said he would stop. I told him he, and it was nice. It was like springtime weather. He could do it outside or whatever. And that same day he asked for like half his rent back because he had to, you know, go pay. Like he was just from day two, he was a train wreck. And so like by day like four, I was like, you're just not a good fit for us. Next week, please find yourself a new place. Right. Like I was even like, it wasn't like you need to get out now. It was like, 
Uh, you need, you need to go. And it ended up, like, I ended up paying him to leave, pretty much. Like, I just gave him all his money back. So he pretty much got free rent for a week. And, um, yeah. I mean, I've had other crazy renters. I'm sure we and Shaw, you've dealt with crazy renters. I had a girl who kept posting on her social media. She was going to commit suicide and kept going out to my garage and, like, finding a saw and cutting her arm and then, like, dropping it down the gutter. But So I lost a saw down a gutter, near like, down a storm drain by my house and all kinds of stuff. She accused um, other roommates of assaulting her because she wouldn't wash her dishes. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff. I had one girl who painted a room without permission and it looked really ugly. And then she, like, bent the, f like, iron, an iron fence. She ran the, her car into the iron fence around my house. Like the black metal iron fence. And then didn't pay to fix it. <sighs> but when you get cool roommates, then it's really great, right? Every now and then you'll get a really great roommate. And then you've met some really cool people. Oh, I also had a, um, I have, I have like a, a murder suicide story with uh, a couple roommates that I had. There you go. Sorry, I had to switch, switch plug in. All right, so that's good. So, murder suicide story. So, I had some people that I knew in real life who kind of came, they were kind of lost in their life for a moment. And they needed a place to stay, and I just happened to have an empty room, a large room, a very large room because it was a couple and their children. And um, you know, cut them a good deal. And they stayed with me for a while. Things got really weird, though. There was a male roommate in my house. And the girl, like, while well, her, her male... Because they, they did end up getting married while they were at my house. But anyway, she was super flirty with the male roommate when he wasn't around. And then when he came home, her boyfriend, she, like, played house to him. And, um, you know, it's always drama when you've got people in a house... So they end up um, getting married and they end up moving out and they end up moving like, you know, 10 or so miles away. And the guy roommate that she used to flirt with was still like best friends with them. And then um, one day he got a call. And uh, I think he told me or another mutual friend told me. And what happened was that the boyfriend who turned husband got jealous of her. For something and stabbed her multiple times and then stabbed himself and then their six-year-old walked in and found the murder scene so yeah i have i have former roommates that became a murder suicide so i mean we and shaw <laughs> maybe 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 you should uh work your way to living on your own someday So, I know. I think about them all the time. I think I'm done with this, you guys. I think I'm done with this painting. Get to the next painting for today. Talked about tying a bow on that ribbon thing. I think that's a good call, but I think I'm going to take a break. Chat. I did have a poll the other day that I did not follow through on. And it's almost noon, so it's good timing for it. 
So I'm just going to set you guys down for the beats. I need like a I'll be back sign. I'm going to make that real quick. Well, you guys can see the sign while you're over there by the music. Be back spoon. <laughs> I like that. Um, I like that wheat and shawl. Okay, great. You guys can see that little like three minute break and then we'll move into the next painting or the next thing. Hey, thanks for waiting. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Geek Squad. Just pulled something out of my recycle bin here. If I had a Sharpie, I would have wrote on it with a thicker Sharpie. I think that's what it means. Like, kind of need one. And just write on it with a thicker Sharpie. Oh. All right. So back back to Wizzy's. I said we were gonna like make this like a more more noticeable knot. And you know what? We need we need clean water. Let's leave Wizzy's thing here. Bring back the be back soon sign. Clean water.
what what you get for a drink oh yeah that's what i'm supposed to get I'll be back okay it's a quite quite the to and from to and from thing here we'll be back gotta get a drink i forgot because the poll yesterday was um alcohol beverage and i didn't follow through on that so let's go get one here uh geek squad i'll let you vote shot of, no because i want to get a cool like shot glass for the shot of sake so i'm gonna have to order that i don't have one so i have apple a bottle of apple cider or the little um he chews i'm gonna get a he chew and they're not really that little but that's what i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a he chew i've got three different ones we could do reviews of them not all in one day though yeah i'll take you guys with me to the kitchen Coming back. All right. So, I mean, they're all three apple, but they're all different. So this is um, Nippon, which is one of the popular brands, and Apple Hichu. And I'm going to put away the Wizzy painting for now. I still think I want to do... No, I've got it all set up. Like a clean brush in that. I want to fix the apple first. Or the knot. So, first sip. Fizzy, very fizzy. So let me pull up like a Google image of just a knot. So I know kind of what one looks like. Okay, and I think this needs to be done with like just a, a darker pink. That was the name of your mechanic? Like their first name? Okay, so a knot really has just like a section wrap around this way. And then like a little section that goes through kind of this way. And that's pretty much it. I think that was a little heavy though on the lines. So let's just lighten it up a bit. Uh, music's very festive and I, and I think it needs to be a bit darker And some outlining on the kind of belt right like that
There, see we covered up some of where the black bled over. I think this outlining really, really helps on uh, this particular ribbon. There. Hey, fancy drippings. Um, what you said earlier pretty much nailed it spot on. I don't know if you were lurking for a bit there. Didn't quite know how to word it myself, but the way how you worded it, how you phrased it. It's about, about right. About right. About how I feel about it, too. So there we go. We're done with this painting. So there we go. There's my dream of Wizzy being in a high school cafeteria serving boiled carrots. Why did I have a dream about Wizzy in a high school cafeteria serving boiled carrots? No idea at all. But there we go. We painted it. Next painting. Because we're kind of, we're down, we're behind a painting. I think I'm going to explain this one at all. We're just, we're just going to go, go with it. It's like, we'll call it like a surprise painting.
<laughs> must no uh door knockers um it's not a dream always like the first painting wasn't a dream um i just repainted an ai image i made did you see it door knockers should, should we go through it all and then uh this particular painting was inspired by a suggestion in the chat yesterday and uh the drama of the week so uh so it's a chat inspired suggestion and relating to the chat of the week ah uh, so you've seen the first one here i've got them all right here so the first painting i did this week was of nancy this was just based on some ai art i did that nancy copyright strikes so i painted her i took a screenshot of her from one of her videos and made ai art from it and she copyright strike it so i did an original painting based on that um that screenshot of her and these are ai robots that she likes to release butterflies so the ai robots are trying to eat the butterflies the monarch butterflies to get energy to make more ai art so that's the first one that wasn't a dream that was just a that was an interpretation of my feelings about her copyright strike of auntie nan nan and then we did um, a challenge with um, Robbie because he's had dreams about Carl. So my first dream about Carl was um, I found him on a beach and he hugged me and patted me on my head and told me everything was OB go okay. And he smelled like Hawaiian tropic suntan oil. And then I had another dream about Carl another time. Like we were in a city in Europe. This is a cobblestone road. And I'm kind of like <clears throat> sitting maybe down here below these um, kids playing soccer and this is old Carl giving young Carl some information or some advice or some screenshots or some um, clips but I couldn't hear because they were far away and mumbled and then uh, you know the the whizzy serving carrots in a high school gymnasium or high school cafeteria dream I don't know why I had that dream <laughs> that's true Oh, wow, that's a great suggestion, door knocker. I don't know. I don't know how long I want to play the painting streams game. And it really, that one would have to be like, I would need help um, with some of the job stuff. Because um, even like, I know people have talked about it. I think there's been live streams about it. But like, I need like a, ma like a master list would probably keep me busy for a year. I don't know if I want to paint that many. But um, yeah, we could have a whole book of them. And so this one, this one was inspired by a suggestion yesterday and um, based on the events of chat this week. All right. And sorry about the background music. So every, I guess my laptop goes to sleep and uh, that's when it stops playing. door knocker if he was awake this would be the perfect opportunity he's not blocked over here it's not a lot of people over here he could come over here if he was awake i'm not sure if he's awake 
and just say, Hey, Spoon, I hear you. Door knocker. I'm sorry I spoke to you in that tone of voice and disrespectfully. And then you guys, if you guys want to argue about, you know, the things you guys were arguing about, then I guess that's between you guys. You guys can hash it out here in my chat if you want it to. But, I mean, there's a good opportunity here if you want to acknowledge Oh, he said, <laughs> oh, Jeff, Jeff, I could go to any military base any time. And it's been that way for at least 10 years because I drove cross country with my daughter when she was three. She's 14 now. So, I mean, really, it's been 11 years and I stopped over in San Diego and, um, stayed at the navy lodge there i also um you know because then you'll be like well as long as it's the same branch of service no that's not true either because i've been to the um, joint base lewis mccord in tacoma washington many times and that is, you know i'm navy not that i'm navy but my spouse is navy we're navy right and so that is an air force army base with a valid military ID, I can go to any base, any time, with a valid ID. I mean, maybe it's different for retirees. That part I don't know. Now, I'm not saying I'm the end-all, be-all know of military stuff, but I only can speak to what I know and what I have experiences with. Yeah, the next painting is a surprise, um, Geek Squad, but I think you'll see soon. There's a, I'm going to say there's a little, maybe a little shout out to you with it. Inspired by a, a suggestion you made yesterday. But you probably forgot what you suggested. Oh, well, now I've made, now I've made my windowsill pink and blue. It's okay. I'll just wash it later with some soap or bleach or something. Yeah, I get that door knocker. I feel like, you know, a chat's a chat. Just because I'm a lot of people gave me a lot of crap about some of the chats I've been in. And I'm like, I just wander anywhere. And usually there's always someone I can chat with or talk to or converse with in the chat. And sometimes I turn these uh these things like on like mute. I mute whoever's speaking.
and door knocker, your spouses, and and you don't just say spoon. I can't share that if I ask a question. You can't share. Okay, don't feel obligated. Your spouse is still deployed, correct? And uh, approximately, because you know I know how it is with the military. Approximately, how long are they going to be deployed for? If if you're allowed to share. You know, not violating OPSEC. Until April, May of next year, yeah. I get that door knocker. It's rough. You've been through deployments before, though. It's not your first rodeo. Yeah. And do you have a, and again, door knocker, just say, I don't feel comfortable sharing that. If I ask you something you're not comfortable with, um, you have kids. Hey, Gregory. Welcome. Hope you're having a good night, Gregory. Gregory. We're just starting, but thank you. Uh, Gregory sometimes runs panels, uh, door knocker with uh, veterans. I don't know how often he does it, but I know I listen to one. Hey, G. You missed Daisy earlier, G. She might still be lurking, but I don't think so. She could just kick off her own live stream and do whatever she wants. No need to be afraid. If 
fighting for freedoms, but afraid of the internet. How long have I been painting? Um, this is day four, Gregory. <laughs> day four of painting. As an adult, I probably painted a lot as a child. But um, as an adult, this is day four. Very, very exciting. No previous skill or knowledge. I just had a, a story. <laughs> Sorry, Gregory. <laughs> uh, I had a story in my heart to tell. And I felt like watercolor paints was the way to convey that emotions. Because the other way that I conveyed them was copyright striked. <laughs> Sorry, Gregory. I'm, I'm entertained by myself often. You know, Gregory, we all have our, I wouldn't say skills or talents, because I wouldn't say I've got skills or talents here, but we all have, you know, the things we can do and the things, you know, that maybe are outside of our wheelhouse. So Geek Squad, I'll have to wait for some of this uh, this area to dry. But you know how it is. Build the layers. Thanks, Gregory. Hope you're having a really great evening where you are. You like to sing, Gregory? I didn't know that about you. I actually, Gregory, I told you this on another one of my live streams that I stopped coming to your channel because you had catfish on there. And when I tried to bring it up to your mods, they ended up blocking like three or four of my alts. So I, I stopped fighting it. I don't know if you've worked out that situation with your mods. I mean, I was just trying to help you guys out. You had someone pretending to be a Japanese woman who uh, didn't speak Japanese. But one of your mods was kind of infatuated with the catfish, so... 
got upset with me for calling out the catfish. So I haven't been to see if you sing on your channel. Do you sing on your channel, Gregory? Oh, okay. Well, Gregory, if I, um, I'll come back and resubscribe to you. Hopefully you cleared me out of your hidden list. I mean, it was a while ago I brought that up to you. And all my, all my alts are named Spoon. Like I'm Spoon, 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 Spoon. I got four alts all named Spoon. And, um, I'll come resubscribe to you. Are you on your main account now, Gregory? Because I'll drop your channel link. And I'm glad you worked that out with your mods. I just didn't want to see anyone in your chat get taken advantage of by someone that was fishing for information. And ultimately money, right? Yes, Charlie Cheswick. A special kind of bowl of soup. There you go, Gregory. And I did, when I was over there grabbing the link, I did resub to you. So I'm glad you worked out those issues. Charlie Cheswick, have you seen some of my other paintings? Oh, no problem, Gregory. You know, it's there's not much I could call out, but, um, you know, just happened to be, happened to be the place and time and was able to I actually got in trouble from your mod for speaking a foreign language, but that's, sorry about that. You know, normally I wouldn't pull that kind of shenanigans, but that person was just sketchy. So I, I didn't say anything like offensive. I'm just like, hey, hello, how are you? I'm located in Yokosuka, Japan. Where are you? And I asked them like a couple times and they just ignored me. That's how, that's how I knew. Oh, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all, Gregory. I just uh, was trying to help. It's very common for um, people to used a profile of like a beautiful Asian woman and then try, try to get people, you know, to talk to them and stuff. And, you know, start to give them information. for people to fall for it you always got to keep your stuff your information safe because a lot of times and i tell you this from from a professional troll level gregory uh, people gather the information over time so they won't ask it to you all at once they'll make notes right make notes and start keeping notes about all your information and slowly you know build up what they know about you up over time and then try to reach out to Maybe one-on-one -on -one contact or different things. And, you know, usually the notes are really good. Like, you know, they'll find out the name of your dog and then bring that back up or, you know, any detail. So you always just got to be really careful with giving out personal information. And especially in a chat. Always keep yourself safe. Just be aware. Yeah. 
Yeah, Gregory, I'm sure, right? It's getting to be more and more common. All right, all right, Geek Squad. I was going to ask you a question, but I've made an executive decision on my own. I was going to ask you if the things that were in this bowl were going to be gray or blue. But I think I'm going to do a mixture of gray and blue. Because I think too, too, too many blues would make it too much blue overall. And I think too many grays would be too much gray overall. <laughs> Maybe we make them like a grayish blue. Geek Squad's been here for most of the painting, so uh, they know how this goes. So maybe it's a layers, a layers thing, Geek Squad. Start with like a gray base layer and then we add like a blue, blue tint over them. So they're kind of gray blue. <laughs> so lost. That's okay. It's just rambling to myself. Lost our background music, too. Oh, and some of them, many of them we lost in the painting, like in the painting of the background. There you go, Geek Squad. Orange soup. Might have to wait for some more to um, dry out here so I can see where the pencil lines are. It's still a little wet. <laughs> a little bit, Wheat and Shaw. Someone said that I need to put a spoon in like every painting I do going forward. We'll kind of draw out these faces a bit. Shop, you got it.
Oh, thanks, um, Geek Squad, for the the broccoli. Because that should go by that character right here. Your drawing sucks. Did you even finish, Robbie? Did you finish your Carl dream drawing? Because seashells was in here tattling on you earlier saying you were procrastinating and I said that didn't make for a very good leader. And that I might have to demote you from um, Craft Wars General. To just craft war soldier. <laughs> you unsubscribed? Hold on, I'm gonna move you guys further away. Robbie? Escobar? After all those Legos I sent you? After... The, I don't even remember what else I sent you. Headphones and lotus flowers and 
Christmas gifts after all I did for you and you unsubscribed? Oh, you're blaming YouTube? It's definitely YouTube's fault. I forgive you. <laughs> so, so, uh, Robbie, uh, did you, um, did you finish your painting? That's right. You never would because I'd fly over that ocean and murder you. I've got a daughter who's building a squad of a murder hornet, a wolf dog, and some poisonous snakes. We come get you. Yeah, it does. It does do that. Um, Wheat and Shaw. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. You're saying you did it, though. And it's on your channel, and I could go look at it. When I'm done. Later. Right? You have to show it. Or I'm not going to believe you did it. Doesn't matter if other people say you did it. You probably paid them. Oh, you just finished? Were you live streaming it, Robbie? Sorry, I was over here being selfish in my own world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fine, Robbie, that you used colored pencils. No effort from Robbie. It's what I would expect from him. So, Robbie, we'll set aside this for a moment. Because I've been busy, Robbie. So, this is my, my dream, my, my dream photo of Carl. I mean, Robbie, it is, uh, you know, a little unfair because, you know, I had two dreams of Carl to go off from and you've only had one fever dream. So maybe the source of your inspiration is the, the fault for why um, your efforts did not become as fruitful. So this here is my first dream of Carl where I ran into him on a beach and he hugged me and patted me on the head and he told me everything's going to be all right. And he smelled like Hawaiian tropic suntan oil. Maybe that's it too, Carl. You didn't smell or Robbie, you didn't smell Carl in your dream. And then this is another dream I had about Carl where like I'm sitting down here by these kids playing soccer, maybe having a coffee or something. And we're in a European city with this cobblestone little path. And this is old Carl. And young Carl and old Carl is either giving some advice to young Carl or some tips or some screenshots or some clips. So there you go, Robbie. There's my finished artwork of Carl. And then, you know, it really was, Robbie, for me, it was a team effort because then Geek Squad took my painting and ran it through facial recognition. And then they got some results and then I took their facial recognition piece and then flipped it into an AI generated completed piece. So I mean we've had we've had a couple days on our assignment um, to to get to an end result and you know I have you know a team and you just have Robbie and a couple viewers. So I mean it's really an unfair advantage overall. Now Robbie have you seen my Wizzy painting because that I finished today. Because I think you've seen my Nancy painting uh, where she um, she copyright strike the image of her I lifted off from one of her videos. And then the second copyright strike. The first one, I didn't even know she had a channel. But then, you know, 
after the first one, I sh kind of, you know, was feeling a little spiteful and petty because she didn't want to make peace. She wanted to be petty. So I could show her petty. So I lifted her image, made it AI art, which she also copyright strikes. So this was my rebellion against that. It's just what I do. I just rebel. So I took that image, made this painting. These are the AI robots eating the monarch butterflies to gain the energy because she releases butterflies. And she's terrified of AI bots. So that's um, that's the Auntie Nanan. And then, and then Robbie, you better be sticking around for a minute here. Doing all this show and tell for you. Poor Geek Squad has probably set through it now half a dozen times. This is uh, my Wizzy dream. Have you had a dream yet about Wizzy, Robbie? Snap, snap, get to it. You gotta dream about all these folks. So this is my dream about Wizzy. He works in a high school cafeteria and he was serving boiled carrots. So that's my Wizzy dream that I painted. Part of yesterday, part of today. And then now, now we're working on another painting but I'm not I'm not telling as I go what it's about and who it's about it's for chat to chat to figure out so yep I know it's been a very productive week of making content Robbie this is how you make content you sit on your ass and do paintings well yesterday I didn't sit on my ass I got up and took the live stream for a walk and um, it was quite, quite disastrous because my camera was super shaky. So I got, Robbie, are you still struggling with holding your phone and selfie stick and all that that you were doing while you were doing rocks? Because I haven't watched any Robbie walks in a while. Thanks, Robbie. I'm like on day four of being an adult painter. It's quite the journey. I've learned absolutely nothing. I've developed zero talents and skills. It's fabulous. Have now drunk twice on stream though. Cheers for day two of drinking on stream. It's the chat's fault. They vote it. Well, the first time, the first time was um, my choice because that painting went quite sideways. And the only way to recover was to use the excuse of drinking. So, um, oh yeah, I was asking about your selfie stick situation. Robbie, did you, um, hold on. Wrench soup will return. So, because I know, Robbie, you tried a gimbal and you didn't like it. So I've been trying different backpack carriers. I did this earlier. Sorry, Geek Squad. This is what you get for being a devoted fan. Repeat. So um, I did use this one, Robbie. And this one um, was very wobbly. I called it like a Snorlax earthquake because um, it was resting on my chest and just super wobbly as I was walking. Um, clipped to my backpack because it's just such a, a long stem here. And then the weight of the phone kind of made it very rocky. So I did get one with a shorter stem and I'm going to try that out and maybe it will be less rocky. This one feels a lot more solid. But then this is the one I'm really excited about is it sets really close to clip, sets really close. And then your phone just is really up close tight to the strap. But what I like about it is that it has a quick release button and then it comes, your phone will come out. This is like a ring holder, right? So I'll clip to my phone. I don't want to stick it on my phone yet, though. I want to try out the other one first. And then it snaps in. It clicks in. Yeah, well, that's why we have to get other ones, Robbie, to try. You can't just try one. You got to try multiples and then maybe get a different backpack. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to um, do a selfie stick. If, if these options don't work then I'm probably going to look at a shoulder mount action cam because <laughs> I really don't want to get a mount to the head headband one. <laughs> but I will do it. I will do it for the content. I will walk around like a dork with a camera strapped to my forehead. I will do that for all of you. Sacrifices must be made in the name of content. Oh, you're going to try a different gimbal? 
Yeah, I've got like um, on my list is like a gimbal phone, like a gimbal camera. So separate, like separate from your phone. So you don't put your phone in it. So it's not all that weight rolling around. It's like a small, just a small little camera. Like small like this, like small little camera, like the size of this pouch lid. And it sets on that tilt and it um, attaches to a base and um, and then that base plugs into your phone. Oh, you gotta try a one axle one. Yeah, that makes sense, Robbie. You gotta try them all. And I'm just going to paint in these uh, wrenches a little darker. Some of them aren't very dark. Just kind of sketching it out since I lost my pencil lines. And then uh, Geek Squad will do that, that layering with the blue on them, on some of them or all of them. We'll try it out. We'll try it out with a couple. We'll see how it looks. I definitely think though we can make them a lot bigger. You know, they could be different shapes than that. that so they're really kind of noticeable <laughs> it's brain soup so uh robbie those those what you're seeing is the sony action cam and the screen is on your phone and they bluetooth or hardwire connect to your phone and then use your phone's data or even more complicated, they connect through your phone and your phone connects to a live view or a Bella box, which is like a, a multi, multi SIM card device that is often decently sized and you have to carry in your backpack. I won't worry about that. But those little cams connect to your phone and that's how you live stream. And I think you and I have already talked about this. We've already talked about the, the dual phone setup where you are pretty much using one phone to live stream and one phone to read the chat. I think there's no way around that. Most of those IRL streamers do that. So that's how you can use like a GoPro or a Sony action cam. If I'm going to buy one though, I've already kind of done the research on them and I personally am going to buy a Sony action cam and not a GoPro. And the reason why, besides some of the, the specs on them, is I just looked what other IRL streamers were using and they all use the Sony action cam. So that's a lot of why I would buy that too. I figured, you know, they've they've done some of the legwork on the research so that I don't have to. Because some of them, you know, are people who could buy either or. Like, you know, they have the funds for that. All 
I mean, we do have Geek Squad here. They could share their opinion. If they wished. And if they don't know, they could do research if they wish. And then share an opinion. Before, you know, dropping, you know, four, five, eight hundred dollars or whatever on a camera. <laughs> Don't feel obligated, Geek Squad. I mean, my personality is, you know, fuck it, buy both. And <laughs> try them both out, so... I mean, it's just a matter of making the decision to do it. And then, you know, I'll get whimsical one day and just do it. So, you know, and I'd probably do the opposite of what you told me anyways. So don't, don't feel at all responsible or obligated or feel like you have to get informed. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you on that, um, Geek Squad. You know, and I'm legit just talking about like getting a camera for one live stream plan, which is kind of silly. Oh, well, you know. Robbie might feel differently, but Spoon feels like money is just money. Whatever. Though how I bought the um the what led me to the decision on the mic that I got was watching a review, a YouTube review comparison between the mics. The two mic like the two better mobile mic options. So, I mean, I guess I could do that, too, is look at a review. Use YouTube for, you know, some of the things that other content that's on YouTube. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true, Geek Squad. That's what I did when I bought the, um, the phone that I used for um like the chat phone i just bought um a refurbed iphone 8 off amazon and it was like 70 dollars so you know pretty much nothing and i was gonna set it up for like a 24 running or maybe like i wouldn't say 24 i was set it go set it up for a live stream bunny cam just watching one of our bunnies Except I did that for like 11 minutes and realized I don't like doing that. Don't like running a bunny cam. And, but, um, it's come in handy for, that's why I kind of don't want to commit to a, a camera. Because a camera only serves one purpose. That's why I didn't really mind buying a phone. Because this phone has come in handy for so many different purposes. Like, right, it's multi, multi purpose having a backup phone like for now i just pretty much use <laughs> i just use it to read the chat <laughs> bought a whole phone just to read the chat but no i um look up stuff on it and i have used it when i was saving a bunch of files and i used it to help record stuff and it's just had so many purposes and i really like tools that are multifunctional like that multi-purpose and I don't really want a lot of equipment and that. That's why I'm trying to stick to like maybe hopefully a backpack clip that works because it's small and it's easy to carry and you can throw it in a backpack pretty easily.
Yeah, Robbie, and you still haven't gotten a microphone, right, Robbie? So Robbie, this was the first microphone I got and it was like 20 bucks off Amazon. It doesn't come with the um, cover and it just has that little charging port there. So like it was really small and convenient. I think that it was 20 bucks and the little fuzzy cover thing was, you know, a couple dollars. I think I sent you a fuzzy cover thing. And then this worked just fine and it was only maybe a month or so ago I upgraded to the Hollyland. I won't show you the receiver because I have it plugged in but I like that the receiver has a charger port on it and then so two microphones fit in this little charging case and then the receiver fits there in the middle um, it's just holding it it doesn't charge it and so these are the little microphones with the Hollyland, and that's what I'm using now here's my and it comes with a little snap-on cover and it had, I had one for each, but I've set this other one down in like the bottom of my basket of like random miscellaneous technology stuff. So a little, a little $20 simple mic can get you by. You know, and at the end of the day, Robbie, you know, just do it because you enjoy doing it. I think we've talked about that. Like, I'm kind of pushing the live stream content because I want to get my watch hours. Because I want <laughs> I want the notification from um, YouTube to go away. <laughs> That's the only purpose. Stop bothering me, YouTube, with your notifications. <laughs> because, you know, I can make a bunch of, you know, edited videos that are 10 minutes or less long. But it takes so long making those. Like, those videos take a long time to edit. And it takes so long to build up your watch hours from those. And just sitting here and live streaming, you know, painting wrenches. Like I've gotten more watch hours this last month than I have the previous year. Cause my channel is a bit over a year old. So live streaming is really the way to go. And Robbie, we, well, we talked about that uh, with you, Robbie, your watch hours were fine until you, you know, cleaned up your channel because if you turn stuff private, and YouTube takes those watch hours away. Are both my phones iPhones? Yeah, my camera phone's an iPhone 14. So that's my primary phone. And that's why I use it as a camera because it's a better camera. And then uh, my, my secondary, like, just got it off Amazon, a refurbed phone, um, was just what they had for sale. Like they sell a bunch of iPhone 8s for like 70 bucks. And I just recently, because you did this too, um, Robbie, you went to get a second SIM card. I just recently went and got a SIM card added to it. And since it's unlocked, you know, I'm not like any kind of contract or anything on it. And I just pay, you know, the little extra. You pay a lot more for yours. Or I think maybe you were telling us about your total phone bill. Like mine only added like, 10 or 20 dollars a month to mine i got mine on a like minimal well and you have different service plans than i do but mine's on like a minimal phone call plan and primarily and then my whole plan is on unlimited data so that's why it wasn't very expensive for my sim card line You know, in the U.S., you're going to have different options available. Because even my primary phone, I don't use it for... No one calls me here. 
every now and then I need to talk to the post office, like the Japanese post office, but no one, no one calls me on my phone line. And like family and that, I just use um, Facebook Messenger. Like no one wants to make an international call. Robbie, you missed me saying the other day, though, that Carl's scared to come in my channel. If you want Carl to return to you, that's what you need to do. Just say he's scared to come into your chat. <laughs> I'd probably get you in so much trouble. <laughs> but, yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> Good luck. Oh, Carl's protecting you. He's so sweet like that. <sighs> so thoughtful, Robbie. You're so lucky. That's why he won't be your friend no more because he's protecting you. So thoughtful. So silly of you though, Robbie, thinking you can make friends on the internet. Carl would tell you. Here, I'll be I'll be your substitute fill in, Carl. Robbie. They're all tards. And you can't make friends on the internet. Is that about right, Robbie? <sighs> Go blame me when I get in trouble. It takes a long time to paint wrenches. Something, something stoic. Something, something stoic. Like, I'll, I'll, 
uh, understand like what would be something something stoic give me an example i've been drinking it's all a blur that's <laughs> why so i'm not painting eyes yet Look, Robbie, I think I'm beating you on lurkers. Oh, just curl nonsense. There's so much curl nonsense. Who put this many wrenches in a soup? Oh my gosh. I still have so many more to paint. Broccoli, this is all your fault. You should have spent more time on your painting. I spent a whole live stream on mine, Robbie. Like two, three, four hours, something like that. I don't know. It's still up. Only one live stream. Why didn't you spend more time on it? go watch the replay when I shut down like I don't know two hours or so or whenever um, I will watch the replay of your live stream And then be sure to comment how disappointed I am in you. No. I will not do that. That's not nice. You could have built the whole dream out of Legos, Robbie. You could have like built, because uh, I remember your dream in pretty good detail. Um, so you could have done, you could have done like a whole like storyline scene with your dream because your dream was super elaborate, like about how you and your daughter were following Carl through town or whatever. So you could have done like you and her going through the town and then you were at his house in his backyard and there was the big hill behind it. You were looking through his window at him and then you tried to knock on, you could have done all that out like in Legos. Oh, you stressed out over personal stuff. I get it, Robbie. I wasn't stressed out yesterday about personal stuff. I was just whacked out and went for a walk. I just cut my stream and went for a walk. I didn't cut my stream. I took my stream on a walk and then cut out and went inside the store. I get it. Some days you're just not, you're not there. That's okay. I hope the personal stuff works out, Robbie. I don't have no personal life stuff going on at the moment. I 
I do own, I do own the, so, so Robbie, cause you'd never seem to know what's going on. I'll catch you up on drama and gossip. Um, so over on Tommy Temper's channel, uh, which is inspiring this painting, there's a bunch of giving and taking of wrenches constantly. No one, no one knows where the wrenches come and go, what the mayhem is all about. So that's what's going on over there. Um, Captain Red lost his channel to a copyright. I had it up. Oh, a guide, not a copyright, a guidelines, a community guidelines violation. Undetermined if it was for music or because they're fighting with some Australian lady who's absolutely out of her mind. Um, could be either or. Um, so he was playing music and there was a black screen with some information. I got the screenshot of that, but I'll have it. It's on the phone that's recording. But there was also a crazy Australian lady that um, was saying things. So she might have got her people to mass report the video or something happened. Anyway, so he lost his channel. He didn't really lose it. He's just prevented from live streaming for a week. So he made a backup channel. That's where all the pirates have gone. And while they were over there, I told him a fact about pandas, that there are no pandas, wild pandas in Japan. Totally took out red with that information. And now I am a captain over there and I control the dinghy that I guess everyone's floating on. But I'm a really like non-present captain. I made my crew and then I kind of abandoned them. So I left um, Real Red Mama in charge and Angie and uh, Adorable Deplorable as the cook. So, you know, those girls will handle it. Uh, what's the backup channel? It is, um, I believe it's at Red Captain. Oh, I could get the link for you. I'm like the master and controller here. I think it's Red Captain 420. But you know what? I'll find it for you. Just to make sure. Let me post the link. But he'll be back to his main channel at the, you know, in a few more days. I think he's somewhere like day two or three of it all. And I think he only lost access to his main channel on um, like a couple days ago. They're actually live right now. Here we go. Yeah, I just, I can't be in charge of a, a dinghy in that level because um, I got to do my own stuff over here. So there you go. There's the backup channel. She did. Ninja did come back for a bit. And then, um, like, for a couple days. And then I think she's busy working, like, real life stuff. You know how that is. People got real life stuff to do. But she did come back and everything was good and there was no fight. And I think she's just gotten busy with real life. And then there's a whole battle going on between, I guess, Broccoli and Summer. Hot Mess Summer. Um, I guess Hot Mess Summer went live on her Facebook and showed a tattoo that's on her breast. And somehow, I guess, Broccoli got a hold of it somehow. But um, they've been fighting. They've been yelling at each other for a while. And Tommy Temper, she was over in Tommy Temper's and Tommy Temper asked Broccoli when he had a wrench to drop her link and Broccoli refused because they were fighting. And um, that's how Broccoli lost his wrench over there and Broccoli and Queenie are still fighting and Broccoli's still fighting about what's happening and he's just fighting everyone. You know how he rolls. But yeah, so... That's, I believe, all the updates on it. Oh, and you know about the whole telescope Daisy day before Halloween thing. So telescope was live streaming at an event with some friends. They had a child with them, like who's the age of our daughters, like mine and your daughter. I think she, um, this girl was eight, telescope said eight or nine. And the girl got handed a phone to read the chat while telescope was live streaming. And 
Daisy said some not nice things that the child read. She was here earlier, refusing to apologize for that. So there's a whole battle going on with those folks, those characters. Ron Voltz, I guess, was in on it too. He, I guess he said some not nice things to the child too. But Ron Voltz has apologized as far as I understand. So that. Robbie, we're supposed to be fighting. It's too much effort, Robbie. It's just not my nature to fight with people. Is that why you unsubscribed, Robbie? Because we were fighting about something. I just don't really understand how people can fight on the internet so much. Constantly. Make a mistake. Apologize. Try not to do it again. Maybe if people painted and drunk more, they'd be less feisty, beating on everyone. Okay, Robbie, I'm going to give out secrets to the universe here. Paint and drink. Listen to some soothing music. Don't take the internet so seriously. There. First layer of wrench is done. Uh, thanks, Geek Squad. Taking a little break. Before I paint the, the three characters. gonna sit you guys down um, for a moment and just take a little walk checking the time i'd almost run over to the like the sun just came out and i'm like it's 
kind of on that cusp of like, I've got an hour and a half till my children come home, but like, that's not enough time to run over to the beach. I do have that one beach 10 minutes away, but it's just not enough time. I wish the sun had come out like at like 10 or 11. I'm going to set you guys down for the music though, and just do some stand up and stretching. All right, if you're still here, we're going to change it up a bit. Oh, you might not still be here. 
No, it looks good up there. Hold on, just double checking that you guys are still here. Oh, no, everything looks good. All right, changing it up a bit. My chat phone's loading, but that's okay. Everything else is working. So we're going to read, we're going to do our magic unicorn reading time. And then uh, we're going to do some knitting and maybe rant a little. Because why not, right? So I'm just, I'm going to reload this over here and see if that helps. No, that doesn't help that. So let me just try one more time to disconnect the Wi-Fi and reconnect the Wi-Fi. And then hold on here. Oh, it's updating. YouTube on the chat phone's updating. So it'll just do its thing there. Get my glasses to reach you guys over there. All right, you guys, I'm getting a little burnt out on painting. Um, Geek Squad, if you're still here, you can um you can you can maybe hear what's good what happened next so you don't have to worry about it over my three day weekend. So this here, this image that you could barely see, this head, is going to be Tommy Temper. And he is laughing maniacally because he likes to play these wrench games. And this head right here is going to be Queenie, who is going to be seething, seething her facial expression. See, I got to get some reference pictures, so I'll have them handy. So she's going to be seething. And then this third image here by the broccoli is obviously going to be Brock's. And the, um, yeah, you can ask a question because I'm going to ask your advice. So Tommy Temper's laughing maniacally. Queenie's seething. What kind of facial expression should Brock's have? Um, I started with some big round eyes, like a kind of gasping wow sort of expression or shock. Maybe shock that his wrench got taken away, but um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions of what his facial expression. And I want to make sure that if I paint Queenie's face as seething, which means, you know, kind of squinty eyes is, you know, my skill. I just want to make sure it's not like offensive, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't want to be insensitive, culturally insensitive. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have some photos of um, Brock's um, and Queenie. I like all of all of them. Oh, no, I don't need you to send me a picture. I've got all of them. I've been around for a while and I used to just make shorts about people. Not shorts, but like clips and parody. I used to make parody videos about all these characters. So I have all their photos. But I will definitely um, check your short about Brock's. I used um, his sweating in the bathtub face image for a lot for a long time. And I even have some AI artwork of all three of them. So anyways, that's, that's who's going to be. And it's kind of like Brock's and Queenie are salivating over this bowl of wrench soup that Tommy Temper is serving. Right. Because they're always like it's always um, like always fighting about wrenches, it seems like, in Tommy Temper's channel a lot of the time. Right. He's always giving wrenches, taking wrenches, talking about wrenches, talking about his mods behavior. Um, so many shows just focus on that. What mod did this? And what mod did that? And here's your wrench and I take your wrench and, and so much control by, um, by other forces than just doing what he wants to do. 
right? In my opinion, in my perspective, instead of just making choice. I mean, honestly, he could run his channel with no wrenches. Okay, see you later, Robbie. He could run his channel with no wrenches at all. And um, just, um, just have a strong blocked word list like I do. It's easy peasy. And then he wouldn't have all this mod drama. But he likes the mod drama. But I mean, it's just, it's so time consuming, I guess. I mean, I guess if you want your time to be used, talk about mod drama. I mean, it, and it's not really all his fault. It's the people like Queenie and Broccoli and like Daisy and Ron Voltz and whoever else, like who makes a big fuss about like having a wrench or not having a wrench. Like so like possessive of wrenches. Almost all of them. That's a lot of why I don't do mods in my channel. I don't want, I don't want the personality that comes with wrenches. Wrenches, wrenches bestow personality onto, onto the, the people. Hold on. We're feeling inspired here. Okay. Cause I guess we'll have to, we'll have to, uh, do a couple paintings next week. <laughs> yeah, I I caught um I caught a bit of that of his show this morning. I was watching while my girls were getting ready for school, because basically all I am when they get ready for school is background, right? They know how to get themselves dressed. They know how to tie their own shoes. They know how to make sure they have all their stuff together. And all of that. This is going to be a horizontal picture. And I'm just going to sketch this out for next week and see how I feel about it. I'm going to have to buy a whole nother water pad, color pad. All right. All right. So it's like the wrench, right? Which is here. Right. The wrench. Right. Portrays down this godlike power upon the recipients. Right. And they just let it go to their heads. I already cleaned out my little water dish. I have no water here. Right. And it's like this ray of power down upon the recipients of the wrench. Now we're getting into interpretive story time with, um, with, um, Yeah, chill. It's kind of like that, but it's like these people aren't getting paid. <laughs> so, I mean, at least with a promotion at a job, you get like a bump in your pay and like a task list of responsibilities. And, um, and you guys can't see what ended up there uh, hardly at all, but it's very yellow. Bring it closer. We'll paint it out maybe next week. The power of the wrench. Um, so chilled, I think that there's a little bit of that over in red space with some of the mods. Like, I mean, you have a different experience than I do over there, but when Brett was in charge over there, not really in charge, but when he was a mod over there, I knew that I can never enter red's chat. And the one time I came over was because Taurus 76 rising was over there. And, um, I was over in Celtic Mud's channel and we noticed she was over there and kind of making an ass of herself and everyone was afraid to go get her. And I'm like, look, I'll risk my count. I'll go and tell her to come, come out. And I did, I went into the chat and was like, Hey, Taurus 76 rising, 
you know, your uncle Mutt wants you to come over to his chat. And like, as soon as I showed up there, oh, it's Spoon, get her, ban her, whatever. And I probably did get banned or hidden, right? Because I had this reputation of being a troll, which I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm a troll, quotation marks, we're all human, but whatever, right? But like, I didn't do anything harmful or hurtful to, um, to anyone really then or that time or whatever. So I feel like, well, I mean, I think it's still that way though, chilled because I was there. It's part of this puppet show I'm working on for next week, but it was supposed to be the, it was supposed to be last week. It was supposed to be this week. It just hasn't come together, but I saw um, a guy who hangs out. Yeah. He hangs out in the church chat. His name's Mike and he's going through cancer treatments. And so he does kill a lot of time on YouTube um, floating from chat to chat and I saw Mike go over there into Red's chat, not this week, but last week. And as soon as he popped up in the chat, everyone kind of pounced on him like, Mike, who are you? You're evil. You must go. And he's just a dude that wanders chat, kind of like Mater. He just wanders chat to chat and, you know, will talk to anyone. And I feel like there's still some of that, some of that suspicion that floats around in some of these channels and chats. And I would say that in my opinion and perspective, that still exists a bit in Red's channel. And, um, you know, I get it. Like some of these characters they've gone around and around with like telescope, with G, um, with Lisa Hurley, I get, they've got feelings about those people cause they go around and around and around, but there's a lot of us floating around that, um, don't really have alliances or allegiances to everyone. And not all of them have a channel per se, like, like I do, but there is a lot of people that pretty much would go to pretty much any chat and be chill in a chat and not create drama and conflict and arguments and that, and just hang in a chat and hang with a variety of people. Like I'm so thankful I got a chance to hang in Red's chat and get to know everyone there because I never had that chance before. And, um, I like I pretty much like everyone. Like there's, you know, there's only a couple people here on YouTube that I really don't like and can't tolerate. And one of them is Queenie and that's pretty much it. Just Queenie. That's pretty much, I mean, I, I don't trust broccoli. Um, because he's just too much back and forth, but I can be in a mutual, like a mutual acquaintances chat and not, you know, go off on him and be polite and respect the, the host rules. Robbie's a perfect example of that because sometimes broccoli and I cross paths over in Robbie's channel and we can be polite. That's the thing I don't get either. Like there's so many people that are always wanting to be combative. I mean, doesn't it get exhausting? Don't you get tired of fighting? Don't you maybe want to talk about something else like cheesecake or something? Or about, you know, why, why is it always a fight? Like every day, some new fight about something and especially fighting about wrenches. At the end of the day, it's the channel owner's decision on who has a wrench and who doesn't have a wrench. And if it's not your channel, you're not entitled to it. And if you feel you are entitled to a, to a wrench and a channel, I don't know, bring it up with them privately, bring it up with the channel owner privately. And that that channel is not your channel. It's their channel. And that if you have a wrench, you shouldn't be moderating the chat based on your own personal feelings. You should be moderating the chat based on what the owner of the channel wants you to do. Like I hand out wrenches sometimes here for different reasons, like usually for someone to drop a link. Hi, Mater. I'm um, good to see you, Mater97. So sometimes I hand out wrenches because someone wants to drop a link or someone and I just reiterate like, hey, I don't want you to time anyone out or hide anyone. That's the rule of my chat, right? Like that's pretty much what my wrench comes with. Like, here's your wrench to drop the link you want to drop. Let me know when you're done and, um, and I'll take it away again. Like I can handle this. No problem. Just make a strong block word list. 
but on other channels there's a like i feel like some people are like sitting there reading every line of a chat and then making a determination of especially maybe with people they don't know so well of is this like every line they write is this person okay still is this person okay or should we immediately and this is what gets me about the whole like political side of things is like every comment made you weigh that person if you should squash them like time them out hide them delete them get rid of them and if you can't handle the stuff being said in a chat what makes you think you're capable of going and and fighting some type of on a, some type of like government level or something in my opinion like uh, mater you've gotten into it with a lot of people on a lot of different chats and people have said really horrible horrible nasty things to you and you for the most part let it go and let it roll off your back and you still like you don't like like telescope said some really horrible things about digging up your wife and hanging her head on his wall and that and that was absolutely appalling but i think since then you've crossed telescope's path and you've let it roll off your back and i don't think you would hold that grudge and um you know because i think you have a wrench over in red's channel right mater like you wouldn't um time out red or time out telescope or hide him just because of how you feel of what he said to you now you would do it if red told you to if you have a wrench right like that's the thing like people wrap so much of their own feelings into their use of a wrench and in a lot of ways you're actually harming the channel owner I was um thanks for speaking up i oh this microphone's dying one moment there you go that should be better sorry about that And hold on, I'm just going to get it so where it picks up the, the background music because I have it on um, noise um, insulating.
Yeah, I mean, Mater, you do really good at like holding your own when people aren't kind. And and I think, I mean, that's why, I mean, Mater, I really like you. Like, I think overall you're um, a very friendly person and you're pretty laid back and um, you have things that are important to you, values and opinions that are important to you. But overall, I see you as a person who just comes and hangs out on the internet to have fun. And that's why I like you. Like, I mean, I don't think I've ever, well, I can't say I have never seen you really get mean. It's different. It's different how I would say that you like, because I, I do remember when you and Mutt kind of went at it a bit. But um, I don't know. It was like a different kind of mean, I guess. <laughs> like it wasn't like a vindictive or malicious mean is I guess the way I would put my description of it for you, in my opinion. Like it was more like, I don't know. Maybe not like really taunting, but like, okay, well, if you're going to be an asshole to me, then I'm going to be an asshole to you. Sort of bantering, bantering. It was a bantering kind of ness to it. It didn't seem really angry. And like, just remembering like the tone of your voice and that conver the types of conversations. Like, I don't know, you could correct me on that, but that's how, that's how I heard it with my ears. Was it more was like a bantering, not really an angry, um, argument. Like I've never just really hear you get like, really like mad at someone. And I don't hear, I know you and Jeff have gone around and around and I haven't ever heard those. So maybe, maybe you and Jeff have yelled at each other. I don't know. But Mater, maybe you can clarify. Have you ever really gotten angry? On chats or on panels? Because I don't think you have. Yeah, you have. Well, it doesn't come across, Mater. As being angry, the times I've heard you, it sounded very, um, very controlled. Oh, and I was getting something else out because I said we were done painting for now. Only at one person. You want to tell the story? I mean, I've gotten angry at different people at different times, but nothing that conveyed came through really anywhere. His accent helps. Yeah, but see, I can understand Mater. And see, if he says he's only been angry at one person, then, you know... That would make more sense. Maybe I just didn't hear that one time. Because I've done translations for Mater when other people don't understand him. I mean, I grew up in, for a bit, like a bit of my young life in, um, in Georgia. And my grandfather is from Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, no. I understand that, Mater. Yeah, no. I kind of got mad at Newfie Princess yesterday. Just wasn't in the mood to put up with her. And usually I don't get angry with her. I usually don't care. But she just kind of, she tipped me off yesterday. So I was just like, fine, you're out. And I don't normally time people out on my channel. I just wasn't in the mood to put up with it.
She didn't get shredded, Geek Squad. Don't even know why she would come around here anyways. I don't run panels. She's a panel whore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She wasn't shredded. So, not really comfortable at the moment. You guys are like, you're on my laptop and I'm meant to bring you back up on my chat phone. So, let me see if that came back up. Yes, okay. It's really, because my laptop's over on my, like, my left shoulder. So it was really awkward for like reading and knitting. Much better. We have to move that because it wiggles too much. There we go. So who, who's made the betting pool on how long until Queenie came back? Who knew? I mean, I knew her rage quit wasn't going to last. And now she's back. She's being all calm. Saying she's being calm for, for, um, for her, um, because of her journey. But Dave, if you were reading the chat a bit there, because I was earlier while my girls were getting ready for school, she called, what's that girl's name? Um, Kim Elmore? Oh, good, Mater. This ties into what you just said. So Kim Elmore was in Tommy Temper's chat. I don't know them. I'm just remembering it from when I saw today. And I don't know them at all. And Queenie, who all the time misidentifies people, was calling Kim Elmore out for being a troll. And, like, Kim Elmore was surprised and stunned because, I guess, I mean, I've never seen her in the troll chat. And that's where I hang out. So, she's not there. And that's where all the trolls hang out. So, if Kimmy's not there, then I don't know why you would identify her as a troll. So, Kim was really upset with that in the chat from what I could tell. And you're right, Mater, like there's so much of the I saw, I saw you over there. Or there were people that saw you there. And that's kind of what happened with Mike on um, Red's chat last week is, um, you know, he was just in the chat saying hello. And it was automatically he got pounced on. Who are you? We don't know no Mike. You must be evil. Oh, we've seen you in the troll chat. Therefore, you must be one of them. Amita, you got a lot of this um, a few months ago where you would be, you know, you floated around quite a bit. And I float around now. And you got the, oh, I've seen you over there. I think that was some of the um, debate that you had or some of the conflict you had with Broccoli is, oh, I saw you over there. And I've gotten that when I've hung out in some of the Red Crew channels now lately is, oh, well, you support this person or you support that person because you've been in their chat. Um, you know, if there was more channels around, I'd probably, probably get more in trouble. And I know you've talked about this on panel mater. It's just like a chat's just a chat. Yeah, that's, oh, oh, you're supposed to be a pirate geek squad. I don't think I've ever seen you over in, um, in red's chat. But um, just because you've been there doesn't mean you... the whole thing about people getting upset about the pirates or whatever is absolutely silly. Who cares if people identify as a pirate or beaver squad or whatever little nickname they want to give themselves like it, it doesn't mean anything. Overall, I mean, for the pirates, they, they think it means to them that they're family. And for, I don't even know, like, Brett's beaver squad 
people, you know, all thought that they were, you know, friends of broccoli or whatever. But like this whole like accusatory, well, now, now you're, you're a pirate. I got called that too, a geek squad. You're a pirate. You donated money to Red, so now you're a pirate. Uh, no, no, that wasn't it at all. Carl dared me to donate money to live streamers. So I did. If I wasn't, if I wasn't in a fight with Carl, Red would have never gotten donations and everyone else who got donations. So when they thank me, they should really be thanking Carl because Carl dared me to do it. Every donation that I've done as a super chat um, over the last few months, thank Carl because Carl dared me to do it. And I was in a war with him about a stupid little detail that we were fighting about. And he was being a real asshole to me. So I was like, fuck it. I'll show you, Carl. And that's where the donations came from. You got to dare me to donate to people? Oh, I'll donate to people. And he originally started off with, um, like, I think, I can't remember. I'd have to go find the screenshot. But it was like, you know, $100, $500. And then he was like $1,000. And I'm the type of person like, oh, Carl, I'll show you. You'll, we'll do $5,000. And then you will never dare me to do this again. Or at least it won't mean the same. And so that's, that's what all that was about. And, um, you know, I was only going to donate by Super Chat. So I only could do channels that were monetized. And that first donation I made to Red said, you know, this is because I'm in war with Carl. Like, it was pretty laid out pretty clearly. And, you know, for me, it's all about making jokes and having fun. So all those um, later donations on that other day was um, that I told Broccoli that every time he commented, I would donate. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason or explanation for anything. It's just made up as I go and just whimsical. So, yeah, I mean... There's no meaning to it. Everyone, that's the thing, Geek Squad. Everyone tried to put like association and meaning to it. And it's like, nope. There's no meaning to this. It means absolutely nothing. Like, it's not like, you know, like Broccoli tried to make it that I was buying like favoritism from Red um queenie made it that i was um buying that i was an international terrorist who was doing money laundering and so i donated to tommy i mean that's the first time i donated to tommy temper i'm like okay queenie if you're gonna sit here and tell tommy temper that i'm an international terrorist and money laundering then i'm gonna donate 50 dollars to your friend and now he's part of it too like that's i mean it's just there's no meaning or rhyme or any reason to it It's this got you that they do that's so ridiculous. Yeah, and then like with Broccoli, like with Brox, it's the whole like made, he made a whole community post, a screenshot. I think he screenshot the donation I made, or maybe he didn't. He just made a whole screen post. So he made a whole or a whole community post about it with this elaborate, like made up fictional story. And that's, um, that's why I like. I would laugh at the reason why I went after you the first time. Well, it's not the Italian princess one, is it, Mater? Because I made a short about that one. And I know when you first saw it, you weren't sure, like, is Spoon on my side or what? No, that was totally in support of you, Mater. Because it was just so silly. Because you had made friends with IP on Facebook. I don't... I know that wasn't the first time because I'm sure he's gone after you more than that. But that's the one, that's the one I know of. <laughs> You'll not say. That's fine, Mater.
Like, I mean, that to me was so silly. Like, all right, so you and IP became Facebook friends. Like a lot of these people, like a lot of you, like a lot of circles became face, you know, go, go that little extra stretch of, of being Facebook associated. Cause you get to know each other and you want to have a way to talk to each other outside of, of YouTube and I don't know if you Discord made her. I know a lot of them are over on Discord. I don't Discord anymore. That sounds like a, a place to get in trouble. I don't need to know what's happening on Discord. You know, keep it all open and transparent and on the up and up. I got to cut off the background music for a bit. Oh, it's really weird. So I keep talking this direction and hearing like an echo, like a wind tunnel echo. It's been going on for a while. I think it's the can. I'm going to just move it over here. It's all in my head, you guys. So now I'm going to talk this way. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Let me put it back. <laughs> All right, now we talk. Oh, wow. You guys probably don't hear it at all. Oh, weird. And then I put it over here. And then, yeah, now it's not. <laughs> being, being stalked by a can. <laughs> it's messing with me. I switched to some lemon water for a bit since the can was messing with me. And I just don't get like, Broccoli, why are you sleeping? Why are you sleeping right now? Get in this chat. Why, why do you constantly need to yell at people all the time? Different characters. What joy does that give you? I mean, I get it. You don't like hot mess summer or whatever, but like, why? Why do you need to yell at her again or whatever? Like, why can't you just ignore people you don't like? Or why can't you calmly talk about the issues that you have with someone or the conflict you have? Why, why do you need to yell at each other? And, and hot mess summer, why do you need to keep yelling at people and chewing people out and swearing at them? Why? Why can't you calmly talk about your issues with certain people in a calm and reasonable sort of manner on your own? Why does it always have to be yelling and screaming? And but I mean, I get it if you swear in your I swear sometimes. And why must it go on and on and on for so long? Like um, Geek Squad, you heard me tell Newfie Princess off. Did that last for more than, well, it lasted more than five minutes only because she came back and I had to figure out how to time her out for 24 hours. But I pretty much said, you're a cunt, you're a, ten you're a panel whore, fuck off. Boom, she's gone. What, what kind of, what kind of thing takes yelling at someone for so long? And then when she came back, I'm like, nope, you're out of here. 24 hours, bye. Why, why must it take so long? Like, it takes a lot of energy to yell at people that long and a lot of anger in your soul. And to do that day after day after day, how, how do you re-energize yourself after that? Are you like, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to accuse people being on cocaine or whatever. Like, uh, like, like, can we get like a glimpse of your in real life behind, like behind the scenes of, of what leads you to this daily allotment of energy to yell and scream at people every day? Like, um, are you like drinking like energy drinks? Are you like, 
are you? You know, like what's hyping you up every day to have this much energy? And and do you do you maybe think that there's something else out there that you could be like using this energy on? I don't know, like a job, like, you know, to make money, to pay for things in your life. If you have that much energy to yell and scream at people, then you can, you can, you know, put that to use and, you know, go work and something. I work quite hard here. I watch this plant grow. Maybe if you had a job like my job and your job was to sit and watch a plant grow, you would feel some calm and peace and patience and not be yelling at people on the internet all the time. So this is my recommendation for those of you that like to yell at people all the time, every day, hours and hours and hours of it. Same thing, rehashing, relooping over and over, day in, day out. Maybe you replace the characters, but it's the same fucking thing all the time. Get yourself a job watching plants grow. It will bring you some calmness and some peace and some tranquility and teach you patience, give you something to focus on, create a schedule so you water the plant once a week. This, this is my advice for you because I cannot yell at people. I do not, I do not contain that much anger within myself to yell at people all the time. All, all day, all kinds of people just, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what motivates these people to yell all the time. I mean, I get it. I get, and, and what, like, what exactly are you caring about? Like, okay, I get being maybe passionate and you care about something that's on a deeper level, that's really relevant and important to you. But I'm not hearing that come through and all this yelling and screaming and anger and stuff. Like when I told Newfie Princess to fuck off, it's because she said I was boring. And she was criticizing my content, which I care about. And my time. So that's why I told her to fuck off. But it didn't take long just took a you know a minute or so and I guess if she came back around again I'd tell her and she behaved the same way I mean I would tell her to fuck off again and hide her for another 24 hours but like if you take this last summer how many hours did Queenie spend talking about me on her live stream and when I Finally, we had a chance to respond back. It was like, what, like an hour? So I have, I have hundreds of hours of her recording talking about me, which is funny enough. A lot of it's incorrect because she had the wrong person, but she has spent so much time on that. And like, and especially when she went to Ottawa, she didn't have, um, she didn't have, she didn't focus on what she was there for. Like what, she only went into downtown Ottawa twice to protest. She was there for over a month. And she only went downtown Ottawa twice. And what, this whole thing had been like a year or more in the making. Yeah, chilled that. I mean, that's what I told her. She wanted to talk about Jeff and I don't care about her obsession to ride in Jeff's big truck. So I told her to go find people to talk with about it and I guess she wanted to compliment Tommy Temper and I told her to go fight with people in Troll Central that actually care about that too so I mean really many times I've just told her to make her own channel and then she could talk about the things just like what I'm doing she could talk about her own feelings on her own fucking channel no one cares about the things you care about go make your own fucking channel and talk about whatever you want to talk about on it then you don't need to pander to panels and chats. Talk about your obsession with Jeff and his truck. No one cares. But um, like, 
I'm just surprised that Queenie drove all that way cross country for something that was a year in planning that one of the original, what did she say? There was originally five who were part of the paneling and one of them, Wolverine, ended up being an infiltrator or traitor. So you, you even messed up with a small group. You originally trust it. You drive pretty much halfway across Canada and then you are there for like five weeks or whatever and you only go into downtown Ottawa twice. I mean, I just, I don't feel like that's a lot of passion or caring about something. If it was something I cared about and put all that effort and time into it, I would be, I would be downtown every day, beating the sidewalk, having my sign, voice killed from screaming at the top of my lungs every day. Like, I don't know, you guys, there's some fucking weak ass protesters out and about, in my opinion. And I, I share this opinion as a protester. Like, I've been involved in protest. It's been a while and I've gotten older. But I mean, when I was involved, I was all in involved, like committed and passionate and present, present being the most important part, present uh, there at the actual protest at the times that we were supposed to be there. And um, like, I just, I mean, I feel like it was a very weak effort. But I mean, that's just my perspective from what I've seen. And I definitely, if I was there, I would be too focused to spend my time talking to, I, I call people like, you know, online, like your pocket friends. I would be way too tired to waste any energy on pocket friends or pocket enemies. I wouldn't have time to deal with pettiness on the internet. Talking about people on the internet. I would be focused on the task at hand, the, the physical people in front of you, the people that are there with you, the efforts you're doing there in person. Maybe some people don't know how to separate in real life from like in real life reality from fantasy and imaginary existence on the internet. Is that maybe it? I don't know. I know that when I shut down this live stream that um, I go back to, you know, my real life existence and focus on those things. Yeah, chilled. I'm not really sure about all that. So you should know that I have absolutely zero compassion for her anymore chilled so I come from a very biased baseline with her and only because I've tried so hard to work things out with her and but I've known her since the Ottawa convoy and how she betrayed um, the east coast Ottawa convoy that's how I know her so I've known her a very long time so my perspective about her is very biased and I do not know how much I believe the story of her past, in my opinion. And either that story or that version or whatever, she does hold on to quite a bit and perhaps maybe does hold her back from being present. But I'm pointing out more that she was like she was sitting in that lawn chair in front of Parliament fighting with people on the Internet versus holding a sign and talking to the people around her. And I think maybe chilled, maybe you didn't catch any of her live streams of the people who were supposedly in her group and their facial reactions when chatting with her, like talking to her in person. Like maybe she just doesn't read people in situations very well. Like maybe she doesn't know how to read someone communicating to her face to face. I don't know. And, and it's not for me to really judge. I just was kind of pointing out that she was all the way over there. She was supposed to be part of doing that. And she spent more time on fighting with people on the internet. 
Like that was, you know, she focused so much of her time and energy on that. Yeah, chilled. And she went after Red before. So that's kind of a little bit how Red and I got connected um, was as asking for help, um, proving that I wasn't Margaret. I don't want it. I couldn't do my own live stream at the time because my children were home and we were on summer break and I wanted to do like a private phone call with someone. And um, I was just going through my head of who I could do that with. And Red and I were on a panel on Jeff's panel together. And I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try that. We don't like each other, but that doesn't mean like, like, I just thought, you know what? Yeah, I could trust him to do that and kind of keep that conversation. Because when you're doing, when you're doing something like that, you never know when, you know, one of your kids is going to bust in the room and, you know, say, mom, there's a spider. And all of a sudden now the rumor is spreading. You've got a house full of spiders. So I felt more comfortable potentially for that happening on a private phone call than like on a panel or a live stream or whatever. And I wanted to make sure to show like my government ID and all that too, to really show, Hey, I'm not this person, Margaret. But in that um, initial conversation, Queenie had been talking about all of you guys like red Mel Ninja on June, I believe it's June 18th. And you guys were all hanging out on Jeff's panel at the time. So you didn't know that she was listening to that and talking about you guys behind your back. So that was kind of the first of it. So when she talks about like, oh, someone else did it first or whatever. No, she was lurking, listening and running her own live stream talking about all of you. And I just happened to record it and was setting on it. So when Red and I touched base, like made contact. I was like, hey, I'm sitting on this hour's worth of recordings of Queenie because at the time Red wasn't so sure about Queenie and he wanted to maybe help have her help him with the Brett issues going on. And I'm like, no, this woman's not your guys's friend. Here's this hour of recordings of her talking about you guys and you guys weren't aware of that. So it, when it, um, when it gets back to like kind of how it started between Red and Queenie, that's where it originated. It was her talking about you guys and in a not nice way. And then all that she did with Easy and talking about Easy's daughter was like, like I could, I mean, besides the fact that, you know, she went to child services on myself, on, um, Angie, on someone else. I don't think it was real red mama, but she also live streamed that going into child services and the report she filed. She named red. She named Angie. She named Margaret, which was supposed to be me, but I'm not Margaret and someone else. I forgot. I forgot. Sorry. I forgot. And I'll disconnect and then remember. But she, um, the way she talked about Easy's daughter's passing was absolutely, in my opinion, unforgivable on any level. And, um, you know, like I will never like equate to her experiences and background to be that kind of, of just absolutely cruel and horrible and insensitive. Like there's a lot of people that have gone through abusive situations, backgrounds, experiences that bad, worse, you know, everyone's at their own different level, but that's never a reason to, um, to, to behave in any way. And there's people who overcome those things. So, I mean, that's kind of, kind of my thoughts on it. I mean, and I get maybe there's people out there who don't like easy, but that's like, to me, this is outside how you personally feel about someone. Yeah. 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 Chilled. Like you'll, you'll never, you'll never forget the things she said about easy's daughter and you cannot like easy, but you could take it as simple. You could just take it down to the bare bone, simplistic of this is a mother who lost her daughter in an unexpected way. And the things that Queenie said about that 
like it shouldn't matter who it was about. And just, and that, I see that a lot. Mater, if you're still here, you probably see that a lot too. There are, there are rules for everyone. And then there's rules for the people I don't like, right? I see that, not me personally, but I see that from some people um, in this circle. So it's fine if you're an asshole to people I don't like, but if you're an asshole any other time, then that's not okay, right? And I think um, if we go back to like the, the Red and the Lisa Hurley situation, um, when Red said things about Lisa Hurley's mom, it became such a big thing and a big divide that, um, that it, I, I feel like in a lot of ways it was blown out of proportion. And especially as we've um, seen more of Red's behavior and, and his way of, of interacting but I think it was, and I think this also applies to the Telescope Daisy recent situation that there's been a bit of like an, almost like to me, in my opinion, an over-exaggeration of um, situations or context. And, um, and then, like Mater, I, I'm going to use you again um, for... Yeah, Mater, I I don't control YouTube. I've not hidden or timed you out or anything else. Um, it might be Mater. You might be. So I've been. I'll take a little detour here. Mater, you might be trying to use a word on my blocked word list. And that's why you can't see it. Um, but there shouldn't be anything unexpected on my blocked word list. So if you don't feel like it's that, like, you know, it's only the obvious things. Like you can swear here, you can, you know, but like there are like certain words that are blocked, like the words that shouldn't be put on YouTube and that violates terms of service. So if it's not that, it could be YouTube. I've also been experiencing that with YouTube. I cannot um, write the word burn on YouTube, like B-U-R-N, burn, like burn baby burn or burn that house down. Um, there was one the other day that I kind of had to work around, right? Like it might be YouTube mater and I can't explain why YouTube does that or not. So here's my recommendation is try to phrase it in a different way. And I'm sorry that you've been trying to type something and it can't come through. I've definitely, and especially like the last week or two, I've been experiencing that more with YouTube. I don't think I could work the, right, the word fire either because <laughs> I've definitely made jokes of like burn that thing, like burn something down in a fire. And I've tried to write it like, um, like using some of like the, the, like the little like lines over the U or the, the little dots or whatever to get by things. Yeah. At first chilled. I mean, I understood it, but then like, it's been what, like a year. And then the other day, um, not the other day, but like over a month ago, Lisa brought it up again. Like, well, when someone, you know, talks about defying your mom and I'm like, okay, we understand that, that that was said and that you're upset about it, but it seems like you're just like, I don't know. I don't know how to really explain it. Like, <sighs> I hate to say it, you guys, and oh gosh, I've got a bunch of listeners here. So as a lefty, I'm saying this, sometimes it feels like lefties push this type of agenda to get like the same reaction. I would say righties do it too. Someone here was earlier. So I was talking about like um, the movie Boys, Boys Don't Cry which is a movie of a transgender person that was killed by a hate crime. And then there was a person here in the chat goes, well, what about this transgender woman that killed these people? All right, we're not talking about the same story, right? It's always a, um, and there's a name for it. Like, oh, the what about, that's what it's called. The what about, well, what about this? What about this? So there was um, something here in the chat, maybe a month or so ago where I was talking about something and Lisa Hurley was like, well, what about? Like not related. And I see this a lot from 
I mean, both sides, but I mean, I'm going to call it my own here. I see lefties doing it quite a bit too. And I would almost say this for the, like the, the telescope Daisy situation. Yes. Ron, you know, said things to that the child read, I guess that, okay. I'm not going to say that because I didn't actually see that part. So allegedly Ron said things that the child saw. I hadn't entered the chat when that particular thing happened. And then Daisy said things that the child child saw. Um, she called, it was obvious that the child was a girl. I think they had called her her or whatever. And Daisy said something about looking like a boy or something. And I felt when Daisy wrote that in the chat, she was intentionally trying to be hurtful, mean, you know, in a way. And it did hurt that child's feelings. And, um, you know, and I could pull it, pull it out on both sides, this what about ism, you know? And so when I've brought this up with Daisy, she's like, well, what about telescopes swearing in front of the children and making the decision to let, you know, let a child read his chat? Okay. Yes. But you're not addressing that you hurt a child's feeling. And then telescope on the other side is also doing a what about ism where he's so focused on what Daisy did that he's not addressing. Yeah, you know, maybe I should have handed my phone or not his phone because it was maybe I should have not allowed my child's friend to read my chat, knowing that this circle and what can happen in a chat, you know, or maybe I should have ended my live stream or what, right? Like it's always a, a what about ism um, and, and almost like a deflection in a lot of spaces instead of just like, you know, what you, what you said, I'm going to think about, I'm going to think about what you said and maybe, maybe admit that, you know, yeah, you know, when I recognize that that little girl, what this little girl, who's my friend's little girl can read the chat. Maybe I should have shut it down. Maybe, you know, shut down the live stream, shut, shut down the people in the chat who are, who are not being kind to her, um, even address it. Be like, you know, he was there and speaking. So be like, you know, in front of like in front of this child, Telescope could have spoke up and said, you know, been listening to what was the girl was reading and been like, hey, hey, chat, you don't talk to her this way. And then a Telescope had the ability to be like, hey, little friend, I'm sorry, you know, someone in my chat said that to you, but Telescope was engaged in conversation with the adults around them. And kind of, you know, talking about like his thoughts and opinions on the people of his chat while letting this child read it. I mean, I feel like there's fault all around in that situation and that almost all the characters in this situation are using a little bit of what about ism? What about this person? What about this? What about Daisy's using? What about telescopes behavior and telescopes using? What about Daisy's behavior? Right. There's a what about ism turnaround to each of them instead of either of them saying, you know what? I made a mistake. I was human. I fucked up. I'm sorry. I, I recognize that. Ron did, um, apologize as far as I'm aware. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like there's been a little bit of a, so the, the original video got turned private or unlisted. And then allegedly Ron and Daisy went in and deleted all their comments. I don't really think Daisy knows how to delete comments. And it's been twisted into such a story that, um, that I just don't believe anybody. That's pretty much where I'm at with it. I don't believe anybody because if you're going to use it as this type of, argument of, well, they were, you know, being, yes, the little girl's feelings was hurt, but if you're going to use it, then be fully transparent and not, you know, this, I don't know. I don't know, but you guys know what I mean about the what about ism. And I definitely see it from the left as a lefty. I'm saying it, I see it from the left, but I also see it on the other side too, as well. I mean, no one's, no one's, non-guiltless in this. And, um, like, I really don't know what it means, but I try, I try 
try not to do what about isms. And I try to, you know, like meter your your right or right leaning. And like we're not gonna fight about politics. Like you could tell me, you know, your opinions on something and I'm not gonna fight with you about it. Like you probably don't believe in abortion, right? That's a pretty standard, like big right side politics. And I'm not gonna tell you like, oh, you're wrong or that's wrong for you to believe that or you you have what you believe and that's perfectly okay. I don't agree with it and that's perfectly okay. I believe in women's rights and that's okay too. And, um, you know, we could probably get into a conversation about it because even though like I'm left on that, like I'm left leaning or lefty, um, I actually agree in the overturning of Roe versus Wade because I believe that that law is so old and outdated now so I do believe in a, the women's right to choose but I also agree with Roe versus Wade because it's a federal law it's been around for a long time I think that there are other options for birth control um, than just immediate like abortion but but then going on a little further I do think abortion should be an option available for women I do not think it should be like a federal level. And see, I'm more of a, I don't think it should be at a state level. I think it should be a decision between a woman and her medical professional. Um, it shouldn't be on the law books at all, in my opinion. But then with the American system, you get it into now, is it covered by healthcare or not? And I mean, it gets really kind of in a wishy-washy area. But I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with it is that it should be a decision between a woman and her medical care provider. Because in some states where it's been made illegal, there are medical necessary abortions that now can't happen. And I get that they're not so common and they're very rare, but they are still medical situations that that might be the only viable option for saving a woman's life. In my opinion, in my perspective, but I do agree with it being overturned. And if you have different opinions, then that's okay. That's okay. At the end of the day, we all go to the ballot boxes and we all vote and whoever wins is who wins. And whatever laws come about or get it changed, that's what happens. And if I don't agree with something that's passed or something that's been decided, then that's on me to fight harder for it. You know, and that's not, that's not me forcing people that disagree to change their minds. That's me talking to people who haven't made up their minds or just talking about my perspective on it. Maybe someone hears it, but to, to go head to head with people that fundamentally on, have a completely different belief system than you is, is not, in my opinion, the way to, to to promote what you, what you value and what you believe in. Um, that's a great comment. So Mater, like problems between chats need to stay between those chats and not everywhere. Um, well, I mean, I guess, I mean, Mater, if that's, if that's how you feel, then, you know, I pretty much could talk about nothing but Queenie. <laughs> I'd be able to talk about my observations, uh, my observations of the internet as whole. But um, I kind of can see where that you might have that perspective. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know, Mater. Let's like, let's just set up a jello ring in the middle and let, you know, conflict battle it out there. <laughs> Like, because there's also made her, you get into the problem of the telephone game, right? Like, so I was in the chat in a chat and people see, that's the thing too, is people listen to one chat and then hang out in another chat and then misinformation gets brought from by the person that's the in between, right? So when Red's channel went down, there was someone hanging out in Troll Central's chat 
And then they were making up the reasons why Red's channel got brought down, even though he was actively doing a live stream of why he thought his channel. And it's not that his channel, let's correct that. It's not that his channel got brought down. It's that he got a seven day hold for a community guideline strike. So the person was coming into the chat saying like, this is fact. And I've been guilty of this. And I've definitely recognized it over time and started to see like, you know what, I need to keep what I know to myself and not reshare in chats what I know. And I'm not perfect at it, but information gets like misinformation gets shared just about everywhere all the time. And I, like, I know I've been long ago, I was called into Red's chat to create correct mince information that was being shared on panel. But I see it, um, I see misinformation quite a bit. I'm just checking my time here. Okay, we're going to wrap up in about five minutes. Thank you all for hanging out. But it's getting on to about that time of day. And, and Robbie, why do you think that is? Well, Robbie, you, you can't read rooms and situations well. We've talked about this before. If you're going over there to just fuck around, then um, yeah, you're probably going to get blocked in timeout. <laughs> All right. Well, you can you can share that perspective here, Robbie. There you go. You guys got you guys got five minutes to talk it out with each other. Robbie, you're a grifter. I know I sent you Legos. You asked for Legos. Now you have the label of Grifter forever. I mean, yeah, you have a job and you work and all that, but... You're a Grifter too, Robbie. I mean, we're all kind of Grifters in some ways. I mean, even having a job is a type of grifter. Did you block him, Mater? Looky there, Robbie. You got yourself blocked by Mater. Oh, you're grifting for subs now. <laughs> well, at least you embrace that you're a grifter. What was I looking up? I was going to look up the definition of grifter for you guys. So, Robbie, the definition is, of a grifter is a person who engages in petty or small scale swindling. I don't think that really applies because I don't think anyone's doing petty or um, small scale swindling. All right. Another definition. A grifter is a con artist, someone who swindles people out of money through fraud. If there's one type of person you don't want to trust, it's a grifter. I don't think these people are grifters, Robbie. It's not, it's not, it's not a con artist or swindling if you just run a YouTube channel and ask for people for donations. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty transparent. Yeah, that's fine, Mater. Robbie has multiple alts, so I mean, he can always switch to one of his alts if he really cared. Where's my sense of humor? Whose sense of humor? My sense of humor? Got lost in the last painting. All those wrenches I had to paint made me cranky. <laughs> this song's annoying too, right?
Hold on, I'm finding I'm finding a chill song. This seems nice. For our final song, final song of the chat. Uh, so Robbie says they always have a crisis and need money. That's why I think they're grifters. Tomato, tomato. Mater's, oh, Mater's sense of humor. Mater, Robbie's asking, where's your sense of humor? And then Mater says, Robert, this is the problem. People bad mouthing everybody and want to be welcome. Wow. Just go read your guys' messages. All right. I'm going to do a uh, mater. I do unicorn, magical unicorn readings for the chat. It's all, everything you see on the internet's a lie. And uh, this is my little gift to the chat. Robbie, I don't think you've had a magic unicorn card reading. And nothing's evil about it. They're just random cards for enjoyment. They're always positive. So it's your card for the next day. Robbie says, yeah, when you strike a nerve with people, they get butt hurt. Well, don't strike nerves, Robbie. Be nice. Be kind. All right, Mater, I'll do you first. So your magic unicorn card for tomorrow, because it's nighttime where you are. So Mater, this is the magic unicorn card for you. It says you are gifted. You are very intelligent and talented. So Mater 97, that's for you. You are gifted and you are very intelligent and talented. It says the magical unicorn. Remember everything you hear on the internet may or may not be true and that I am a novice magic unicorn oracle card reader. Robbie, here's your card. Robbie, it's okay to be different. You don't need to be liked by everyone else. You're perfect just the way you are. See, Robbie, stop trying to go other places and be liked by everyone. You're just fine the way you are. Stay in your lane. Don't, don't rock the boat. Don't create waves. Just be happy with yourself. Anyone else in chat want to step forward and hear their magical unicorn oracle card for the day for tomorrow? Because I'm not going to do all the lurkers today like I have other days. Give you guys about a minute to step forward. Robbie and Mater, you're going to have to, I guess, take your fight everywhere. I'll catch up on the reading. So, um, Mater, Robbie's got an alt where he's reading your comments. So, he says, so Mater says, Robert, I'm waiting on my food. Robbie says, I ate, I ate it. Fuck your food. And then LOL, I know. Oh, you knew you weren't going to last over there? Then why'd you do it, Robbie? If you know you're not going to last in a chat, why go? Why why go? Why go? Why why go to get yourself unban or hidden or banned or timed out or whatever when you know it's going to happen? Why do that? Mater97 says, I'm done with him. LOL. So not Mater saying this, but Robbie, fuck, fuck you. Mater's done with you, Robbie. You can lurk on your alt and read what he's saying, wielding your two phones. Doesn't care no more. Why, why, why else? Well, I don't know, Robbie. You could have spent your time doing better on your drawing, slacker. 
spending your time just going into chat, just knowing you're going to get hidden or timed out and put no effort. Robert Escobar, you fucking failed at Crafter Wars and you're a horrible general and leader of it that I revoke your status as leader and now you've been demoted. And now I'm the leader because everyone else sucks. I'll see you in three days. Hope you guys have a great night. Ending the stream. Because I have to. Because my children are home any minute. Have a great weekend.